Welcome to a Song of Ice and Fire Symposium. My name is Nav, and my pronouns are they, them. And my name's Harmet, and my pronouns are her, she, like the chocolate. And this is a feast for crows. The prologue. In this chapter... The narrator dies. What a surprise! Welcome to the podcast, everyone. So, Harmuth, who died in this this chapter prologue? (laughs) I don't know. I don't even know. Um... Pate. Uh huh. I had to ask Nav for his name about thirty seconds before we started recording, but it's okay. Um, Pate, him. Uh. Yeah, I think it was just him. I think so too. Yeah. All right then. Well, that's a lukewarm start to this book. Then I guess <laughs> just one person died. Boo hoo. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like every other every other chapter we've had more people die, but specifically every other prologue we've had multi multiple deaths, right? No, in Crescens only he died. Oh yeah. And I about him. In the last one no one actually died. It was the lead up to the battle at the uh, Fist of the First Men. But we knew how that like we knew people Yeah, like were people gonna were going to die, but Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I think this is uh, this is probably my favorite one. Yeah, I Prologues? think so. Yeah. <laughs> really? You were very excited for this one. Like well, every time honestly, you see like... I'm just excited for this book. <laughs> okay, that's that might also be it cuz I remember every time like you'd be like, "Oh yeah, like we're reading the <gasps> we're reading the prologue." Like it would like hit you that it was the prologue and then you'd be like, "Oh my god, feast for crows." Yeah. I don't know. I I hope my enthusiasm, like, infects you and that you also (laughs) feel it, the contagion. I don't know. Hopefully. Um, I would love to. I don't, because, yeah, I would love to keep enjoying this book. I don't need, I don't need the Red (laughs) red Wedding. Well, actually, the Red Wedding I was really excited by the Red Wedding, too. It's not that, the Red Wedding wasn't, I wasn't like, oh my god, I don't enjoy this series anymore. That was just very devas- a very mm-hmm. devastating time. Yeah. So I just, you know, I like enjoying this book, so let's keep it going. Right. Go- or these books. So yeah, you enjoyed this prologue? Yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, It was interesting, though, like, because com- obviously this is the most recent thing we've read since the epilogue mm-hmm. of the last book. And... It's just funny to get it back to back because we've never had an epilogue before, right? Right. So we've never had this back to back trend. Um, what do you which mean I, by back to back? Like back to back new places, back to back new Yeah, back to back new places, new people. Person has these wishes, dies at the end, and we saw it coming. Or I, well, I guess we didn't see it coming for the epilogue. Right. But like, do you know what I mean? The same sort of structure. So I think... I think I would have enjoyed it more if we hadn't just read the epilogue and we just did had not that just same... read the epilogue. We did that like okay, two but that was ago. but okay. Yes, <laughs> we have not recorded in a while. However, that was the most recent thing that we read, not counting Dunkin' Egg. So I think if that like like I d- that's not saying that I didn't enjoy the prologue. I did enjoy the prologue, but I think it would have been like I would have been extra excited about it if we hadn't just had the epilogue to like right remind me of the pattern you know okay well let's yeah. see if i can add fun. to your enjoyment of the prologue some with yeah. our discussion but, but i did like <laughs> that's i did like genuinely enjoy the prologue though it was yeah. fun um and i think also why i enjoyed it is just because like he just you know seemed like a better character than like i'm gonna be comparing it to the epilogue because that's <laughs> just what it was in my head but like you know the epilogue guy like at the end of the day he contributed to red wedding and he was afraid you know so yeah. there's only so much sympathy for to go around but for pate like you know at least until right before the end i really did like he was a homie you know <laughs> i enjoyed like the 17 pages we got together and i think he was the well, okay, when Crescent died, that was really sad. I was like, oh, you know, Crescent. 
Um, and it was very like climactic because we were like, whoa, like this girl is not to be messed with. However, I think that I felt even sadder for this guy in his death because with Melisandre, it was like he was going up against a girl with magic, like he had no chance. But here it just kind of like, I just, I just felt really bad for him and mm-hmm. I felt like we connected, uh, yeah. connected with him. So I don't know. Poor Pete. Yeah. I look my... forward to the enlightening that'll happen during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking. Is it is it just me? But I feel like I'm talking weird today. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're just kind of like forgetting how to do this because it's been like a month. Yeah. So bear with us as we like kind of get into it. So, okay. Summary. Yes. Summary. Yeah. Are okay. you ready? 30 no, seconds. but I won't ever be. So let's go. Yes. Three, two, one, go. Okay, he's hanging out with his homies. Um, he's there to meet the alchemist dude because he, he likes this girl and they're going to trade gold for iron and then he's going to get to go. But we have all these conversations. We hear about the drag, the dragons, all the rumors. Um, we meet all these cool people and some annoying people. And they're, some of them believe in the stuff. Some of them don't. It's like a whole debate. And then at the end, he basically dies because the alchemist exchange happens. And then he betrays him, basically. Oh, wow. Four seconds left. Really? Are you oh learning from me summarizing that Duncan Egg story? <laughs> Maybe. I might have internalized that. Um, is that, this a no. new era of summaries? <laughs> no, no, it's not. This is not a new era. I can you're, assure you that. You're like, let me cut off those expectations right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do not be out here expecting me to succeed, okay? My successes are <laughs> few and far in between and short-lived. Uh, joking. That was mean to myself. I'm not yeah, gonna say Yeah, why that. are you... I don't know. I don't know why I'm being mean. Okay, moving on. Okay, he basically, I think, I agree with you. I don't like it when I summarize well, because it's boring. That was boring. I was bored. No, but I, I was happy for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, slay. Um, yeah, no, I feel like, okay, I got to everything, but I also feel like I could have gotten into the detail, but the issue was if I started on the detail... That's where we're going to have stayed. So I didn't even get into it. I was just like, they talked. Moving on. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Anyway, the talking stuff was really fun, too. I, yeah, I love, because you know what, you know what the prologue felt like? It was, you know how we liked Arya's chapters because it was kind of a look into, like, common people chilling? Yeah. Um, and well, not, that... not exactly chilling, but, <laughs> but okay, being chilling is... chilled sometimes. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, but like chilled, it was, it was grilled, a look. I don't know. Okay, sh- <laughs> do not, do not bring that back into my mind. Okay, I'm trying to be happy. Um, but with this, with this prologue, what was really nice was not that like maesters in training are common people. Like I'm yeah. not getting it confused. But it's still like, you know, it, it kind of felt like guys chilling in a uni dorm because that's yeah, kind of definitely. what they are, <laughs> yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And and there was like a really like, I don't know, there was a pleasant, like there was a pleasantness there that I really liked. Um, and yeah. there was like a lot of just like random connections I was making to where I was like, yeah, this is us after exams. Like, you know, like it was just kind of nice because that's kind of the mindset I'm in right now, like a week from finals. So it yeah. was nice to like read about people kind of in that like. True. It's like celebrating gold. your like, friends finishing exams when you have an exam on the very last day of exams. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. And it, it was like this like, yeah, it really had that vibe. So that was really cute because we don't often get to do that like kind of fun stuff and also it's nice to like go back to danny because these characters never talk about danny um yeah they're finally acknowledging her and now we're finally in an air and it was nice because it was i loved that it was a new area of the world we're already starting off strong i love that for us um uh okay i guess every prologue has technically been somewhere we've never seen before technically yeah yeah well yeah this was good though i liked it i did like okay it. all right we should get into it <laughs> yes let's do it okay oh by the way folks uh fyi after we cover the prologue we're gonna talk about some predictions that harmouth has for the book yes i have i have not very detailed but detailed um predictions yeah. for every human 
Well, not every human. All the, like, important people in general in this Sounds book. good. All right. So. Um, so we drop in to the scene where <laughs> these guys are hanging out at the Quill and Tankard. Is that? That's the name of the place, right? Yeah. I like that too. It, it's very like university name too. It's like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. frat house where the yeah. frat bros. Grow, it's like a college go. town pub. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. And we've got these guys named Molander, Alaris, Rune. There's one more, but obviously Pate's there. Armin. Armin's the other one. Yeah. So they're talking about dragons and how there's like these rumors of this three-headed dragon and they were debating whether it's true or not and while they're doing this Alaris the sphinx the sphinx who they call who they call the sphinx is <laughs> is shooting apples right yeah <laughs> can i just say i am in love with Alaris yeah <laughs> i just like i fell for it i did and i just I love this man, and I am yeah, devoted he's pretty to cool. this man now. Yeah. And he's so slay. <laughs> yeah, that's basically my thought. <laughs> that's my contribution. Hopefully he doesn't get so slay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's but cool. he is cool. Um, definitely coolest of the bunch. Uh, yeah, easily. <laughs> and, so, yeah, it's like, homie's athletic, homie's good at school, <laughs> homie's pretty. <laughs> slay. <laughs> Like, go on. All right. So let's talk. About, okay. So while this conversation is happening, we'll come back to the conversation. But uh, all Pate is thinking about is this girl, <laughs> Rosie, whose yeah. mom works at the at the Quillen Tankard. Mm -hmm. And so Rosie was a 15 year old daughter and freshly flowered. You, you. And her mom, Emma, is selling her virginity to whoever pays a golden dragon. Yay! <laughs> right? Um, not Come great. Come on, Emma. Come on. But Pate really wants to do it because he likes Rosie. And he has this dream of, like, not only, like, having sex with her, but then running away with her and... Yeah. Like making a life elsewhere and all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, because he's not really good at the school stuff. He's yeah. been there for five years, he says, right? Yeah. And he hasn't earned a single link. And the Sphinx guys earned three in a year. So, like, yeah. you don't need to be that good. But maybe, like, one or two in five years would be expected. Like, you're on the way. Yeah. yeah. So. Man. It's okay. unfortunate. Yeah. Yes. So he's kind of like, okay, well, I mean, you know, poor Pate, but also like, I, I don't know how much Rosie like <laughs> wants in on this plan. Like, there's, yeah, like it definitely has elements of the dreamy the. Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Oh my oh. god, I definitely <laughs> forgot the term <laughs> for a second. It yeah, took yeah, me yeah. so long to like get there. I mean, it does, there is some indication that she likes him, given the fact that she introduces him to the alchemist who can then, you know, give him the, the money. Whole, yeah. But I don't know. It's unclear. We just, we just don't like hear it. I think like, yeah, I think that to me was like, okay, like I do think she likes him. Um, Like that to me. Yeah, but maybe not, like really not big... enough to like run away with him. Yeah. Like we don't really know. Yeah, 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 we don't know. But I think, like, I think, like, beyond that, to me, the biggest thing was just, like, the fact that, like, we know nothing about her beyond yeah. the fact that she, like, now has her period. Like, mm -hmm. that, to me, is, like, more of the problem. That, like, not to, like, rank the problems, um, but this series has so many that sometimes you just have to rank them. <laughs> yeah. But to me, it's, like, that, to me, is, like, the standout problem is, like, okay, all I know about her is that she's pretty and she's flirted with well one of the other guys. <laughs> Um, and she's the daughter of Emma and she's like being, her virginity is being sold. Um, yeah. and that she like probably likes Pate and has connections to this random dude. Like yeah. that's so, all I know like, about her. But 
like I think that is the overarching problem is that we don't know anything about her. Yeah. But can't dwell. We've got to move on. Yeah. So they're talking and shooting apples and whatever. <laughs> and Kate, uh, Kate, <laughs> Pate. Sorry, Kate, not you. Pate <laughs> is dreaming. Hi, Kate. <laughs> dreaming of listening. like, if only he could be a maester and he would like serve a lord and be gifted a horse and then he could ride high and look down upon all the other people. And <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> yeah, like, that's not great. I mean, I imagine some of it comes from him feeling like he's always being looked down upon. Yeah. But it's unfortunate that his reaction is, I want to look down upon other people then. Yeah. And. I know, but he's also like 18, you know? Yeah. So to me, it's just kind of like, sometimes you're just not that mature yet. Like, you know? Yeah. So he works for this guy called Walgrave, um, who's an archmaster at the Citadel. So he's like one of the major dudes, except... He's real old and forgetful and just not well. Yeah. So while Pate had hoped that he could learn under him, and, and this maester specifically is in charge of the ravens and the white ravens. Yeah. Um, that signal like the seasonal changes. But he's so kind of lost in his um Yeah, he's just not capable of teaching Pate fully. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Instead, And because this guy has kind of lost his capacity to be an archmaster, he has this guy called the Maester Gorman who takes his place in, like, official places, you know? Yeah. So, He's just kind of kept on as, like, an honorary archmaester, basically. Exactly. Apparently, like, they don't have a retirement plan. I, I mean, I, I think we knew <laughs> that they don't have a retirement plan, but, like... yeah. Real sucks. And, uh, yeah, he's in charge of the big white ravens. And he's so proud of them that he wants them to eat him when he dies. Which is <laughs> which was that, such a weird detail to me. That was weird. I was like, I don't know what this means. But maybe it just... I, don't, I was like, I don't know what's happening, but okay. Yeah. So we learned that these guys are there celebrating because Alaris won his copper link. And is now, you know, buying everybody a round of drinks and just celebrating being cool and all. <laughs> Slay bestie. <laughs> so proud of your success. So this is when Pate's thinking about how Rosie introduced him to this alchemist mm -hmm. who's going to change some iron into gold for Pate. And he wants him to steal something. We don't find out what it is till later. But he mm -hmm. wants him to steal this key that accesses every door in the Citadel. Which is some intense stuff. Also, that's not a very secure system. One key that a bunch of guys have that accesses everything? Yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> that this hasn't been a problem before this. Yeah, and they give one to the guy who can't remember anything and they're yeah, just cool with that <laughs> yeah they're like oh your position is now honorary and you can't give other people their links however you know what you should get to keep as an honorary person like they just this is not thought through it, at but, all yeah but you know what it rings true to me because that's how institutions are <laughs> they become Real? so entrenched in their own ways that they never stop to be like but that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So yeah, I think you're right. Okay, yep. so can we just talk about this educational structure for like one second? Yeah. Okay, because this I is so cool. I would love to. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, I, oh, by the way, I went on this rant back in book one. Not that you remember it, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> what rant? Oh, you about told me the, about all this? Yes. Really? Why would it have come up? Because we, Maester um, Lewin, I went on about his pockets, about his chain links, everything. You know what I do remember? I remember the pockets. <laughs> I remember, I have a specific, like, 
Do you remember when he said, like, maesters have a lot of pockets, so it's in my, my key's in the pocket and I can feel it. Like, do you remember, yeah. like, near the end when he <laughs> said that? a flashback to me talking about yes, it. Yes, <laughs> I did. So I didn't even remember you saying any of that. All I remember is I have this, like, one memory of you saying, you know, I would love the maesters' robes because I could, like, put everything in there. Like, each, I just remember you being very happy with the pockets. And I don't yeah. know why that has I think stuck. I would be very happy as a maester. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would, too. Um, I mean, you also wanted to be a teacher at one point, too. Yeah. That also, another factor. Um, anyway. So, okay. So, you come into the system and you're a novice. And you're chilling. Yeah. And then, okay. And usually you're like a kid. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe a teenager. This guy came at 13. Yeah. Um, and then, so as soon as you get one link, you're an acolyte. Yes, I think I'm pretty okay. sure. And then you get a certain number of links. You go through the green candle, glass candle, not green candle. The glass the candle. The certain number of rings. This is mm-hmm. this this is relevant. Depends on the size of your neck. Cuz as lo- as soon as you have enough links to make a chain around your neck, you're a maester. That doesn't feel right. <laughs> remember institutions but yeah okay i I also talked about this wow (laughs) wow right huh okay interesting to know that um okay so then you go through the glass candle ceremony and i'm assuming other things but that's outlined right and then you become a maester yeah and then you can possibly be sent on placements like you know you get sent to Winterfell right. and now you're Maester Lewin or you can become an Archmaester that's a step I'm assuming there's other training there so then so then there's like that freedom there I guess yeah I I don't know how much freedom they have and whether they choose to like stay and like continue their studies and like be part of the institution versus mm. like going off and being placed somewhere or if like yeah, because, like, maesters, I don't I don't think they ever, like, leave the place that they are serving. So they're not going to go back and become an archmaester. But maybe that happens sometimes. Right. Um, Can you request, like, so, you know when Crescent died and they needed a maester? Yeah. How did they know who, how did they know to send Pylos? That was his name? Um, I, I think they just send whoever. Uh, there's probably some kinds of corruption there because like (laughs) maybe this lazy leo guy when he becomes maester and you know he's gonna be like i want to fuck up my father's enemy so send me to like whoever the tyrells are fighting with right now i don't know you know like there's definitely potential for things like that okay but i think it's supposed to be like a you're the you know like this house needs a maester now and you're the next in line to go be a maester yeah okay yeah. so some people could just like end up being like a maester but not like having a role right well like, i guess if you, do you do don't if you don't get sent get out if you don't get sent out sent out you still they still need maesters at the citadel like they okay. need teachers they need librarians they need people to run the place stewards like all the things still happen okay cool cool Okay. Yeah. And, then- and and maesters are healers. Oh yeah. So there's some maesters that just like travel around like offering healing services. <gasps> Wait, that's so cute. Okay. I like that. Right. Um what about okay, so in terms of the links, so there's obviously different like so let's say I have like a golden link versus a silver link, that's like level of mastery for the subject. No, not level of mastery. Each subject has its own type of rank. So oh. studying like magic and the mystic arts or whatever, right? Maester Lewin talks about this at one point because mm-hmm. he has a link that's obsidian that shows that he studied those that subject and mastered it. Okay. okay. So say... So how do they have enough material for... Like, do you know what I'm saying? Is there no, enough so, material So for- I don't know all of the ones. I think gold is math so say you get in into the citadel 
and you spend uh-huh. your first year just hardcore studying everything there is to know about math, which I don't think you could ever do, but like, you know, you study a In whole theory. bunch. Yeah. And then you're like, I know shit now. So now I'm going to go and defend my thesis to the guy who's in charge of this subject. Oh, and he's okay. going to like, that's, he's going to question me on it and stuff and like, see if I'm worth, like, if, if he can like sign me off as having mastered the subject. Yeah. Say he does, then you get a gold link. So you just hang it out on a chain, like a, on a rope or a string or something. Right. Yeah. And then the next thing you do is you study magic. I don't know. Yeah. And you defend your thesis and you're like, yeah, I got this. Then then you add the links are like they connect like you can mm-hmm. interconnect them. Now you've got two links and then you keep studying subjects until you can form a necklace from the links. That's so cute. <laughs> right? I'm just imagining like George R. R. Martin sitting there coming up with this and yeah, like it's imagine good... his his inspiration was like friendship necklaces or something. <laughs> and he's like, you know what I should do with this? Integrate it into my series. Like, it's, wouldn't that be so a, cute? It's the Song of Ice and Fire version of like charm bracelets. <laughs> yes. Wouldn't that be so like, do you know like like has he ever revealed like where he came up with this um i would love if it was like charm bracelets i could look into it um because that would be cool yeah i'll make a note okay slay yeah it it is a cool system um yeah i don't know what but that's so corrupt because it's like so like I have a bigger neck. I need to master 20 subjects. You need to master 10. So then inherently, like, well, I don't know if the less... difference is like 10 versus 20. It's probably like one or two links, but definitely there's a difference, you know? Okay. So I guess and it's not one of those differences like... that is like, I don't think it's acknowledged in universe. It's just like assumed everybody. Okay. <laughs> so I guess it's just like, it would be the difference between knowing like, like, uh, potions of flowering plants versus potions of non-flowering plants well no that actually no that, you that would just study like for example Oberyn, the mm-hmm. red viper he studied that to become a maester he never finished but right. he studied poisons so that would have been like one category oh my god that's yeah oh my god so you're probably learning everything wow like that's uh, so cool. i'm sure like the subjects are endless and then you can yeah, choose yeah. your you know, areas oh. that you want to focus on. I wonder if there's they have, probably like, some core required courses. courses. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like you gotta know how to heal. know how to heal. Yeah, that's so cool. I want to be a maester now in this okay. world. It's like, oh my god, this is the nerdy part coming out. Like, I remember while reading Harry Potter, it was like. I was like, I just kind of want to take these, like, OWLs. And, like, <laughs> I was like, wow, maybe I could get this score. <laughs> so I'm just like, what if I just, like, went away to, like, maester camp? But it, except it's not camp. It's, like, a hostel, like, boarding school. Um, hostel slash boarding school, not hostile boarding school. Yes. Shh. Uh, <laughs> sh- brain, shut up. Um, that would be so fun. That's so cool. Okay, I want to be a yeah. maester now. I didn't know I wanted to be a maester. <laughs> well, okay, too I bad they cause... don't allow women. Oh my god, they don't! Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, I guess you gotta, you know, um, dress up as a guy and <laughs> infiltrate Stop. their ranks. Oh my gosh. Okay, question. Yeah. Um, have my Mulan arc. I would yeah. love that. Um, okay, wait. Brain. Uh, wait. Too bad they don't allow guys. What was I thinking of before you said that? Uh, oh, I was like, I didn't know. Okay, yes. Okay, here's the thing. It's because Maester Pycelle has ruined my perception of maesters because we get the good ones and then the one bad one just kind of like you know because lewin's been dead for a bit like yeah freaking what was his name the Aemon. one who died crescent died oh oh amen slave so it's like it's one of those things where it's like pycelle is so central like he's in king's landing for goodness sake so it just kind of like you know you forget what maesters could be when you then go to see Pycelle every five chapters, you know? 
Yeah. Although we haven't seen him in a while, so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Maesters, be better. Do better. <laughs> I want to know more about, like, their leader. I really hope we get a maester POV next. I would just... Because, you know, usually when we get introduced to a POV, it's like someone's going to be in that universe. Mm-hmm. And I know it could be other people, but I would love for there to also be, like, someone who is a maester. Or, like, something. Mm. Like, high in the ranks, so we get to see more of, like, the leadership and stuff. Right. Okay. Well, it's all very interesting thoughts, but we should move past this first page. (laughs) Yes. I want to be a maester, is the TLDR. Yeah. So, this guy, the alchemist, is Mm -hmm. willing to pay him a golden dragon if he steals this key. And Pate's like, I don't know if I can do that. And the alchemist is like, well, I'll be back here in three nights, so hit me up if you change your mind, you know? Yeah. And so Pate's there today. That was his main purpose. But he's there, but he's still undecided whether he wants to go through with it or, with it or not. Yeah. And when he gets there, he sees these guys celebrating, and it would have been weird to not join them, so he's joined them. So that's what they're doing now. Yeah. And... Um, we learn a little bit about these guys. Uh, the one who's Mollard is the son of a knight, but his dad died at the Blackwater. So now he's turned to alcohol to comfort him. And the guy, uh, the Sphinx, has like, they call him the Sphinx because he's various different ethnicities. Um, his father was a Dornishman, his mother a black-skinned summer islander, his own skin was dark as teak, and like the marble, green marble sphinxes that flank the citadel's main gate, Alris had eyes of onyx. So, that's, that's our dude Alris. I don't, did we hear, one of them is the youngest? <laughs> I mean, someone's yeah. got to be the youngest. <laughs> no. That is such a Ru- Ru- non-statement. <laughs> Rune is, no, but he's, like, younger, and they make it a point. Because yes. they have to be, like, they need someone to be, like, well, what does that mean, you know, so they can fill right. us in. <laughs> so yes. Rune is, Rune fulfills that for us. Thanks, Rune. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're talking about dragons and how they've heard of dragons in Ashai and Karth and Marine, and, mm-hmm. but everybody's, like, telling, like, the the place is different and the, what the dragons are doing is different. But I'll no Molander's like, you know what? I think there's a dragon out there. He's really convinced. Yeah. Because he's like, everybody, there's a common thread between these stories. Yes. Everybody talks of a dragon and everybody talks of a beautiful young queen. And it's too yeah. much of a coincidence to be a coincidence. Yeah. So like all of these people don't even speak the same language as each other. They're coming from completely like not completely, but like enough distinct areas like it's just there's too much going on here exactly there's gotta be there's gotta be something and he's always and he also like he's like my father said always said the world was bigger than any lord's castle and i was like so slay and he basically is just (laughs) like yeah like how would we know what's going on there when it's completely different lifestyle to ours none of us have ever been there like these are the people who were actually there yeah let's not pretend we know everything (laughs) Yeah, and I was like, I, I, which want is you like to quite the maester. attitude to have at the Citadel, which like claims to be the hub of all knowledge, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I would, I would go to you as my maester, you know, over, because yeah. then there's like Armin. Armin is basically the guy who's like, no, no, basically the entire chapter, um, <laughs> because he's basically just like, no, that doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know what you're on about. It's not possible, um. It's not that I have anything against him. It's just I think he's wrong. Well, I know he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have the knowledge that he yeah, is not. Yeah, he's the disbeliever, you know? Yeah. He's like, so, no way, homies. Yeah. Then we turn to the Sphinx, who's always smiling as if he knew some secret jape. <laughs> um, I think the last time we heard that description, it was applied to Theon, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I'm dead. I feel like it's been applied to a few people. Yeah, there's, but there's probably someone after the. I, I I just love whenever when I don't know. I just, this is I just think it's a cute one where someone's like you know. Snakes. Yeah, I mean, 
so yeah, this guy has only been there for a year, but he's already got three links. He's going to be totally fine getting the chain and hey, becoming wait, a minister. Just when we were talking about the people who were telling all the stories and stuff, right? Yeah. Do you remember that one Danny chapter when she was talking to someone and she was like telling them everything? Yeah. And she, who, do we? It was in A Clash of Kings uh-huh. when she was in Carth and she meets this sailor uh-huh. who's captain of the Cinnamon Wind, I think is the name of the, the ship. The way you remember that, you're <laughs> literally, you're my Navipedia. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way anyway. I said like two words and you knew exactly <laughs> what I was asking. I think That's we've so had sweet. this conversation before too. But, I don't think we have, but okay. Okay, maybe I've had it in my head. That happens all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so sh- he brought the news to her that Robert was dead, and she was so That's happy. That's what it was. She, she just, just kept then, leaking. Yeah. <laughs> and she, like, he let him hang out with her dragons and everything. Yeah. And okay. she was like, you know what? Yeah, go ahead and spread the tale, I think, is what she yeah, said. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Because I remember, I remember there was that distinct moment where we kind of clued in on, like, okay, I think we think people are going to hear about this and maybe this isn't the best. I don't know. Like, cause then you're losing that surprise aspect. Right. So, okay. So although of like the rumors, they, they like cite, they talk about dragons and Karth and Marine and like Dothraki dragons and dragons being slaves, all of which we have seen, but they also talk about dragons in a shy, which we have not seen. So I'm like, is there another oh. set of dragons that we don't know about? Because the is super mysterious, and it's like all the way over the east, you know. Ooh, like I, I want to go to a shy, is what I'm saying. I want to go to a shy too. I feel like I feel like that we've been. And a broken Melisandre is from a shy, and she's yeah. all like fiery, you know. And cool. And, yeah. yeah, and what's her n- in Karth? There was this mysterious woman. Her name was like Quaith, I think. Yeah. And she said something like, to go west, you got to go east. To go north, you got to go south and all of that stuff. She also, I think we fear, she said something about a shy. I can't remember what though. (laughs) Yeah. She said, I think she was like, you got to go to a shy, basically. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So yeah, I am interested in a shy. And Slave. agreed. Um, so then we like Pate's comparing himself to Alaris, which is honestly an unfair comparison. Like, first off, we don't know about Alaris and what kind of background he comes from. Like, yeah, you know, like he could have all the privileges that allowed him to be the kind of person that can succeed in this kind of very strict academic setting, but yeah. he is comparing himself to him nonetheless. And uh, he's thinking about how he's trying to, like, defend his thesis twice. Yeah. First before Archmaester Valen, and who was in charge of the heavens. Not, like, not he's not he's not he's not in charge of the heavens, <laughs> but Stop, as a subject. so funny. <laughs> he's in charge I of love the that. heavens. And uh, it went so badly that he, during that experience, he learned... How Vinegar Valen had earned that name. So then it takes him like a year to, no, two years to summon up the courage to try again when he goes to Major Ebros, Ebros, who's known to be kind and gentle, but that also goes bad to a point where his sighs were somehow just as painful as Valen's barbs. (laughs) That's so sad, man. It is. This poor guy. Like, Pete academic career is not where it's at for you like yeah you're not the most academic weapon and that's okay yeah i'm sure there's other things you could do but yeah none of that just... matters because you're dead now <laughs> <laughs> yeah let let this let let this be a yeah. life lesson this is like the opposite of when john argued that like Sam has value because he is an academic i'm <laughs> arguing that pate has value Despite not being an academic, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Then, um, so it, it's down to the last apple that Alaris is going to shoot. And everybody's like, you always miss your last shot. And lo and behold, he does. And he says, the day you make them all is the day you stop improving. But the way that, 
I feel like he misses this on purpose. Oh, right? like, yeah. He definitely totally. misses this on purpose. Totally. This is like the most show off dramatic thing in the world. Yeah, and so I it love doesn't it. mean anything, really. Okay, but it's it's the vibes, okay? <laughs> and it's it's the boasting and it's the image, okay? Uh, I, at, yeah, at least he can back it up, you know, with yeah, actual yeah. talent. So I guess it's okay. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh and he's got this no, I'm cool... obsessed with this man I just yeah. I love him I I do love him like genuinely. all right calm down <laughs> he's not. got this bow that's made from golden heart wood which is from the summer isles and it's like real cool and unique mm-hmm. um and it's really hard to bend and Pate tried to bend it once, and he could not do it. So he's like, Alaris has got some strength, too. He may look slight, but he ain't slight. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so everybody's, like, still talking about the dragons. They're like, this is not possible. And Alaris is like, actually, y'all forgot about Daenerys. Ooh. She's still out there, and everybody's like, oh, my God, right. And they, this, is it Armin? No, not Armin. It's Molander who proposes a toast to her, and Armin's like, shut the fuck up, that's treason. <laughs> and as he's doing this, Lazy Leo comes in. And we've already heard a little bit about this guy making fun of everyone, but he's... Got a nickname for everyone, although I wonder who gave him his nickname. I do too. Right? I'm like, I did he nickname himself? No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. That would be. Um, yeah, and he's uh wearing green and gold and a pin of rose. Like, okay, so we find out he's a Tyrell. Yeah, and he's decked out in all the Tyrell gear. Mm Hmm. I thought maesters were supposed to give up their identities <laughs> with their families once they yeah, joined the all order. All he has is his identity. <laughs> True. So <laughs> it's just like they made Sam change out of his like armor into ill-fitting armor because his armor had his dad's sigil on it at the wall. I think and- the wall also does a better job of up- upholding some of those like principles. Yeah, that the rest of them but claim to believe I'll, in. Yeah, but those also don't make sense because no, like I'm not saying that they're right, but like yeah. I'm saying that like the wall, you know, I feel like the further north we go, the more that it's all, also in their probably ways they he are. gets away with it because he holds power. Oh yeah, through his family name. So maybe if Pate tried to wear like yeah. Baratheon colors or something, yeah, because he was like, ah, no, he's from the Westerland. So if he tried to wear Lannister colors, they might tell him to not. Yeah. Um, and apparently he sh- he's supposed to be being punished for something currently and yeah. confined to the Citadel. But, but he's, he's like, out. what's time anyway? Maybe it's been three days. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, like, be quiet. Like, literally nobody asked you to speak. And now you're here and you're in the yeah. way. And um, he's here. Oh, go ahead. Just one thing before that, though. Okay, so you know when they're, like... You know, Molander's like, let's do a toast to Danny, you know? Mm-hmm. And then Armin's like, oh my god, sure, you can't. And he says, like, the spider has ears everywhere. Yeah. This is, like, so funny to me. Because I'm like, okay. Is it giving you, like, Blood Raven flashbacks? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, Blood Raven <laughs> flashbacks. But it's also like, okay, so obviously Varys, all that. But also, like, so we know how the castle stuff works. Right. For the rest of it, does Varus just have random informants everywhere? I imagine. But, like, everywhere? How? Well, I don't know. Maybe the important places. And maybe he doesn't have direct informants, but, like, there's agencies of informants informants who he then employs, you know? (laughs) I guess, yeah. I think I just kind of was like, there's got to be a way to thwart him outside of King's Landing. Okay, I feel... Yeah, well, yes, but... Old Town and specifically the this tavern are so, like, they're pretty crucial to Westeros, you know? Yeah. Like, Old Town is crucial, the Citadel is crucial, crucial, and all of Old Town and the Citadel hangs out at this tavern. So <laughs> yeah. if I was going to bug a place, this would be, <laughs> this would yeah, be yeah, high yeah. on my list, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think I was just thinking more in general. Like, I'm like, like, if someone's gossiping, like, somewhere random in Winterfell, is Varys gonna know? Probably not, right? Like. Mm -hmm. Depends. He might have an informant in Winterfell. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, Lazy Leo. Oh, he's there because he he gambled away his money. But after having had this luxurious meal, which he's like a boasting, man must over. eat. Yep. And he's like, "Well, I'm out of money now, so maybe Alaris, you can be nice and buy me a drink, you know, for winning your link." And mm -hmm. I love Alaris for this. I only buy for friends. Just like boom, <laughs> slay Alaris, slay. Yeah, and you are for an some icon. reason, like, Alaris, no, Leo calls Alaris a lord's son. He's like, a lord's son should be open-handed. And Alaris is like, fuck off. I don't, I'm not a lord's son. <laughs> Which, yeah. what a weird, like, why? Yeah. yeah is I he because he is, like, kind of elevated in status among this group, so he feels lordly? I don't know. I don't know. I think he just says things and doesn't really think about them. Leo does? Yes. Yeah. Like, he has this weird... I don't like Leo because I can't just disregard him as a person because he has a point sometimes. Like the, <laughs> like the stuff he says after, I'm like, it's just annoying because he has a point, so I can't just be like, Well, you suck. he has information. Well, yeah, but he's making a point with that information. Right, sure. Right, so I, yeah, it's but like before I he gets to that point, unfortunately, he has to be real racist. Yeah, he's basically <laughs> the word. Yeah, I'm not like defending it at all. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying I hate not being able to just be like, "You suck." Moving on. You have yeah. no use to the story. You know? I just wanted to point out that, like, in the above that paragraph, I just wrote "incoming racism" and then I skipped over it because <laughs> I, I just. So that's, I love that you did that. And there's a, another point where it's incoming racism and classism. No, oh sexism gosh. and classism. So I skipped over that too. Oh my gosh. Um, so he, he has named Pate, Pate the Pig Boy, after stories of a Pate the Pig Boy who was like who's like this kind of legendary character that you know you you tell tales about yeah. <laughs> to kids as like cautionary tales or like just like fun happenings yeah um but that pate spotted pate the pig boy would always like get the longer end of the stick <laughs> I, I i don't think that's the saying but getting the shorter end of the I stick like is, it. no i like bad. it no i like it so if <laughs> i love extend every saying and metaphor in the world do it i love it <laughs> But yeah, like he would come out on top, but Pate yeah. here is like, I have never had that be the case. Why did my mom have to name me this? Yeah. It's like bad luck, basically. Yeah. So this is when Leo's like, actually, I got some information. There's dragons. There's three dragons and she has them. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the mage is inclined to believe them. So now, mage, the mage is Marvin, Marvin the mage, who is not—he's not an archmaster, but he's a maester, like in the citadel. And I think Al, no, not Alaris. Uh, Leo serves him. That's why he knows, right? Yeah, yeah. But this guy is known. So people said, so he's not like other maesters. People said that he kept company with whores and hedge wizards, talked with hairy Ebenese and pitch black summer islanders in their own tongues and sacrificed to queer gods at the little sailors temples down by the wharves. Men spoke of seeing him down in the undercity in rat pits and black brothels, consorting with mummers, singers, sellswords, even beggars. Someone even whispered that once he had killed a man with his fists. When Marvin had returned to Old Town after spending eight years in the East mapping distant lands, searching for lost books and studying with warlocks and shadowbinders, Vinegar Valen had dubbed him Marvin the Mage. Okay, two things. Yeah. One, 
he he is an archmaester. It says in the appendix. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that probably. <laughs> no, that's okay. Just because you like just said that he wasn't. Um, second thing is this Marwin that like taught freaking like he did Nina a bunch Stewart. of yes, and yes. he like did a bunch of shit up in there, and we heard about it, and you were like, keep an eye out for him. Is this him? It yeah. must be right. This is him. Okay, so can we now that we've made that connection? Can you remind me because. He, you like his name came up like two or three times before. Yeah. So he taught the, Miri. Yes, I'm going to remind you. That's part much of my notes here. Okay, slay. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> okay. That is my. Key I'm just dance. gonna read to see if there's anything else. But basically, most of the maesters and the archmaesters don't like him because he's different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're basically just like, wow, he learns from anyone other. Other than us, he is trash and he's Yeah, us. and so, okay, here's what I have. So from okay. A Game of Thrones, from Danny's chapter, I don't remember which one, but mm-hmm. um, I looked it up earlier. So this is the, this is what Miri Mazdor says to Danny. Uh-huh. When I was younger and more fair, I went in caravan to a shy by the shadow to learn from their mages. Ships from many lands came to Ashai, so I lingered long to study the healing ways of distant people. A moon singer of the Jogo Nahai gifted me with her birthing songs. A woman of your own riding people taught me the magics of grass and corn and horse. And a maester from the sunset lands opened our body for me and showed me all the secrets that hide beneath the skin. And Jara's like, a maester? Marvin, he named himself, the woman replied. From the sea beyond the sea, the seven lands, he said. Sunset lands where men are iron and dragons rule. He taught me the speech. So that's where she learned how to speak the common tongue. And Mace and Jorah's like, wait, a maester and a shy? What did you I don't I don't believe this. Tell me, what did this guy wear about his neck? A chain so tight it was like to choke him, Iron Lord, with links of many metals. Only, and Jorah's like, yeah, that checks out. Only a man trained in the Citadel wears such a chain. And it's definitely a maester. Okay. <laughs> and this is actually one of the... Re- this is the only reason that they allow Miri to treat Drogon. Drogo, not right. Drogon. Because <laughs> she's been taught... By, by a maester. maester so they're like we don't trust your knowledge but we'll trust the western knowledge you know okay so basically he taught her like healing and like body related stuff yeah i think just human anatomy things okay you know? okay cool sounds yeah good. but the better question is what the fuck was he doing in a shy and what the fuck did he see in a shy yeah <laughs> like yeah, cause, right, because from his resume, seems like he's been everywhere and done everything. Yeah, basically anything beyond like Westeros, he's been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Because isn't so? Because a shy, okay, a shy is like Karth the is the farthest east we've been, and a shy is further east than that. Is a shy the furthest east we know of right now? I think so. I don't have a map of that but i think so okay so yeah i don't i don't know i feel like it could be anything like he could have been i don't know but yeah it's notable it's noteworthy is all i'm saying it is noteworthy i'm like go off sir other mention we have heard of him was in a storm of swords in jamie's chapter when he is getting his arm looked at by Kyburn. And Jamie's just had that dream where, like, he, like, dreamt of all the ghosts that haunt him, like, you know? Yeah. And he's like, hey, guy, do you believe in ghosts to Kyburn? So Kyburn replies, Once at the Citadel, I came into an empty room and saw an empty chair. Yet I knew a woman had been there only a moment before, the cushion was dented where she had sat. The cloth was st- was still warm, and her scent lingered in the air. 
If we leave our smells behind us when we leave a room, surely something of our souls must remain when we leave this life. The Arbitschmeisters did not, did not like my thinking. Well, Marvin did, but he was the only one. Interesting. Okay, wait, where was Kyburn again? Um, at Heron Hall, like when, okay, after Jamie got his hand chopped and they brought him to Heron Hall, Kyburn was traveling with the Bloody Mummers. Mm -hmm. So he was at that time stationed mm. in Heron Hall. And I think, yeah, he, oh no, this conversation happened when Jamie was then on his way to King's Landing. Oh yeah, and and Bolton it happened was like, like right before he went back for Brienne. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Kyburn went with him to King's Landing, so he's probably in King's Landing right now. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, like that's cool another guy. like this guy, like you know his backing of like supernatural knowledge or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So those are when we have heard about him, and now we have heard about him again. He's cool. We should get a POV from him. That would be interesting. So Leo is like, okay, yeah, the Daenerys has three dragons, and Marvin believes them. And also, there is a glass candle burning in the mage's chambers. What? And... So apparently the Citadel has these four glass candles, three black and one green, which I'm like, why is one green? I don't They're know. all made of dragon glass, <laughs> obsidian. Yeah. And no one has been able to light them. They've had them since they were brought from Valyria a thousand years before the doom. And they're basically ceremonial at you know, like yeah. at this point or like always, I don't know, but definitely at this point where on the last night before swearing to be a maester, mm -hmm. whoever the acolyte is, spends a night with this candle in the darkness and they can light the candle or just like hang out in the dark and it like go to sleep or something like it's no big deal. Yeah. But it's supposed to some... And it's, like, impossible. No one can light these candles. So it's supposed to be a lesson saying, like, no matter how much you learn, you never know everything. And also, like, um, you know, uh, cast light like a candle and also be aware of sharp edges and dangerous knowledge and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It's It's got these all, like, symbolic things. But the main thing is the candles are unlightable. Except one is now burning. And what? it's in the mage's chamber, so I assume the mage is the one who lit it. Or uh -huh. did the candle light itself? I don't know. What are your thoughts on these candles? I This is cool as heck. Um, I feel like, I mean, it's gotta be Marvin. Mar Marwin. Marvin. Marvin. It's gotta be Marvin. Who lit it? Yeah. Okay. But how? Like, what? Maybe, like, I mean, like, I feel like he knows things. So maybe, like, he heard about the dragon rumors and that sort of stuff, too. And maybe this is, like, him testing, like, okay, well, if people are saying they're... Well, okay, first thing, he was at a shy. Mm -hmm. And we saw that thing about, like, a shy dragon's. So I feel mm -hmm. like he would be, he would be like the most likely to know. But what what do Ashai and dragons have to do with the candle? I'm getting there. Okay, that's my first thought. Um, I don't know what they have to do with the candle. I'm just putting that thought out there because Ashai I feel like is just always important. Second thought. Um, brain. <laughs> oh second thought okay yeah so he's hearing these rumors um that like there's dragons and like this daenerys lady has dragons whatever you know um and this can be a really good verifier of like you know because if dragons are back then like the magic in the air and like all that is changing so mm -hmm. it's like 
he tries so, it and it worked, okay. which is like, hey, yeah. it's true, you know? Like it's it's hypothesis yes, testing. I, I think you're right. I th- yeah, basically, the candles and dragons and magic are interconnected, and we are yeah. aware that magic yeah. as a whole is returning to the world. Yeah. Like with the wildfire being stronger now, and you know the others being around, everything. Yeah, and it makes sense because yeah. I think we've talked about this too, but it's like, like it's just it's like, uh. Yeah, it's just like yeah, we say, like we I feel like we say this every time something magic comes up. It's like magic's returning, like the the balance that you'd assume would have been natural, like you're like, "Hey, this like f- fucking like volcanic glass, obviously it's not going to burn." But then it's like, "Oh, well now it did." So clearly like like the principles of the world are not in the physics order that no, we think they're don't in. Apply no more. <laughs> no, yeah. literally, the physics is like upside down now, you know? So yeah. it makes sense. And I think um and I think with how much knowledge Marvin has and he tries to get from different areas of the world, I would be very shocked if this was just like a he had it in the room and it lit up and he was like, Oh, you know, like this to me, like he, this character feels too intelligent for this to <laughs> not have been done by him. You He's know? doing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have heard about glass candles before. Also mm-hmm. in A Clash of Kings, when Daenerys mm-hmm. is in Karth, um, mm-hmm. she's talking about how, like, I'm going to go confront the warlocks and I don't have to worry about them because they don't got no real power. And Zaro's own Doxos is like, actually, it is said that the glass candles are burning in the house of Urathon Nightwalker that have not burned in a hundred years. Ghost grass grows in the Garden of Gain. Phantom tortoises have been seen carrying messages between the windowless houses on Warlock's Way, and all the rats in the city are chewing off their tails. So basically, like, in his mind, the idea also of magic returning. So some other guy, this Nightwalker guy, also has glass candles, and those are burning too. That's cool. Yeah, just bringing that up. Slay. See, this is the kind of stuff you would catch on a reread. <laughs> It's just unfortunately 2 a.m. So I I am excited about it, but I don't have the energy to express the excitement. <laughs> That's okay. You know? I'm excited about it. Yeah, because <laughs> this is your prime time of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're leaving my prime now, but sure, yes. <laughs> All right. But uh, okay, I just wanted to be clear that I'm really excited about all of this. And when I was preparing yeah. these notes, I was like squealing with excitement <laughs> and just giggling, you know? No. <laughs> and now I have to like... It's okay. Not have to. Now I can't muster that same thing again. I'm feeling weird. It's okay. Weird. It's okay. It's okay. This, I'm yeah. sure that all of this stuff comes up again and again, so you can be more excited that time around. Yeah, I am excited. Although, like, it, it's kind of nice having you be the one rant about robes <laughs> and books and chains and things, you know? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like having all the things I need to say said without having to say them. <laughs> True. Yeah. No, this Why is cool. I like... <laughs> Yeah, because usually it's like we have Bran once every like 20 chapters and sometimes Danny. So now it's nice to have like other people also acknowledging that things are changing and going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I like it. This is, okay, this is a weird comparison. Yeah. But I'm going to make it. It's like, you know how in Harry Potter, there's like this formula to the books kind of. Yeah. Like, okay, Harry's at home with the Dursleys. It's <laughs> miserable. He gets on the train. He gets to Hogwarts. There's some kind of mishap. He beats the big bad at the end of the year. And then he goes back to the Dursleys. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah. But then in the fifth book, it's all thrown off. Yeah. Like, there's... Like... First off, he didn't beat the big bad at the end of the last book. <laughs> the big bat beat him. <laughs> or mm. yeah. yeah. The Dursleys are horrible, but also he can't connect with any of his like wizarding friends. And when he does go eventually go back to school, it's all horrible because Umbridge is there and messing with shit. Like yeah. you know, it's like a it's like a new era. <laughs> like all yeah. everything is different. This book and the beginning of this book feels like that reset. Like mm. everything is different now. Right. Like, like we've had the big blow up and now we're like, what next? Yeah. 
okay, interesting. I, yeah. I don't know. It's what, no, no, what no, it's think, feeling like to me. I think I, I think I understand what you're saying, and I understand how that can play out. Yeah, that's cool. I, I don't think I, I, I mean, I don't have that many thoughts because I don't know what happens after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but, I'm but just I like think... honestly talking straight up about like this, this yeah, yeah. prologue and it acknowledging so yeah, much yeah, of it. Yeah. Like we haven't, like mo- nobody on Westeros has really acknowledged Danny. <laughs> Totally, yeah. Nobody's acknowledged magic, like, all of these things. Totally. It's like, every once in a while, someone will prophesize that, like, wow, fire's coming back. Or, like, yeah. wow, you know, like, you know, the wildfire mm-hmm. thing with, like, the Tyrion and preparing yeah. for the chain, you know? Like, it's, like, every once in a while, but it's it's so little. So it's finally, the ni- it's finally nice to be like, hey, can we talk about the big conflicts? Yeah, and, like... There's a bunch of, like, these, like, seeds that were planted that are kind of growing now, like, with Marvin and the glass candles and whatnot. But also other seeds are being planted that are yet to flourish, you know? Yeah. So I can't can't wait until I get to unravel some of them for you. This is good. I like it. Um, So... It, is it the morning yet? What's happening? Hang on. <laughs> I think Obsidian it's going too far. No, it's okay. Obsidian doesn't work. Old powers waken. An age of wonder and terror will soon be upon us. An age of gods and heroes. This is mm-hmm. especially interesting to me with the whole, like, who's Azora High? Who's Azora High? Yeah. Um, that's that's my first thought. Uh, but interesting. I like that. It, we're really putting the fantasy in fantasy series, finally. Um, yeah Yeah. okay so they're all like we have had enough of this leo guy we are getting the fuck out of here (laughs) except pate is like i'm gonna hang back for a second yeah and oh somebody's like hey your your mate archmaester walgrave's gonna need you and Pate's like, yeah, if he remembers who I am, sometimes he calls me Crescent, which is such a cool throwback to yeah. two prologues ago. Yeah. But this guy's so old that Crescent used to like be his acolyte or <laughs> novice yeah. or whatever. Wow. <laughs> huh. Yeah. So they leave and you know poor mollard is so drunk they have to basically carry him down the bridge and he's slipping and falling yeah and lazy leo is just being terrible yeah Th- that's the incoming sexism and classism <laughs> which i'm going to skip over and hey i at least I acknowledged it. I know I have. I don't. Need, I know that doesn't earn me like a badge just for acknowledging it, but I don't have the energy to get into it. Yeah. He sucks. We all it's, know. It's also like. <laughs> it's also like there's no nuance here, so there's no like reason. I think like with a lot of the things that we choose to acknowledge and go into. There's a reason because there's something we're dissecting or exploring. Here it's just like he basically throws every single thing in like just he's like sexist, he's racist. Like there's nothing like it's just, he's just throwing things out there, you know. So there's nothing like what do we even say other than recite the insults? Like there's yeah. nothing here. True. So I don't feel yeah. bad about skipping it because there's nothing here. If there was something, True. I we would do it, you know. I think. Yeah. But it's so, basically just like Pate has to just keep control. Pate's real mad. Yeah. He has to keep calm. If he could, he would kill the guy, but he can't because unlike Pate, Leo has two names and his second name oh, is Tyrell. God. So we learned that his dad, Lor- Sir Morin Tyrell, Morin Tyrell. Okay. He's <laughs> the commander of the city watch of Old Town. Okay. Mm. And he, Mace Tyrell is Leo's cousin. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Oh my god. So I guess Morin Tyrell is Mace Tyrell's uncle. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, that makes sense. Okay. That does make uh, sense. I don't know. I had to do like some family math and I'm too tired to do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me who my brother is. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god. I don't know. Just kidding. I... <laughs> oh no, my brain just went down a really weird road. I rem- I just had a flashback to this like game show that was in India. I don't even remember the name, but they would ask questions like, who would be your father, sisters, brothers, sons, mothers, daughters, Stop. husbands to you? Like, right? Oh, like, God. Who, who are they to you? You know what? You know what's <laughs> funny? I can't even tell you if that's harder in Punjabi or like English because neither language can handle that. Yeah. Like that level, you know? No, but Punjabi would have like a very specific name no. for that person. Okay, true. <laughs> Instead of just true. being third curves and third twice removed I know, or but something. then English is like twice thrice removed and I'm like yeah I, I can't ever keep track of that like yeah. <laughs> the thing about Punjabi is it has too many names but at the end of the day the name is specific enough that it makes sense so once you learn it you're like okay I know who that is but in English it's just like you just add a generation or you just add a level and it's yeah like, Come on. <laughs> and like I remember I think in Gilmore Girls or something there's a scene where I, I think it's Gilmore Girls, but I can't be sure. But there, a character is at, like, a party, and they're just, like, passing time, and the person that's talking to them is very passionately explaining how you find how you're related to people. And I, I remember, like, because most of the time which you, when you watch it, you pay attention to the main character and see what they're paying attention to. But I remember on one of the, my rewatches, I like listened to what the guy was saying and he explained it and it actually made sense to me. Not that I remember it anymore. Wait, what was it? Wait, now I want to know. How do you figure out? If, what? Now I want to know. Uh, you can't drop that and then not. Okay, well, I don't remember details. Okay, find it. Come on, I need to know. Well, I don't know if I can find that exact scene because I don't. I'm not even sure if it was Gilmore Girls. I, I okay. think it was Gilmore Girls. If anybody out there knows what I'm talking about, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. Okay. Because it is crucial to us being able to continue on with our lives. <laughs> but we can continue on with Pate's life. See what I did there. <laughs> However short it may be. Oh my. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, he's literally 18. Oh my god. Yeah. He's younger than he both really us. drew the short end of the life stick. <laughs> oh my god, he did. <laughs> yeah. Um and he's having all these am I still a thief if I put it all back and no one ever knows. He still can't commit either way. Yeah, he's having the moral dilemmas. Yeah, and he's like But he eventually cuz he's waiting around <laughs> because it's not quite done yet and he's like maybe this guy will still show up but he doesn't and the sun starts to come up and he's like okay i gotta go so he walks back he starts walking back to the citadel Uh okay i have a thing sure there is a bridge and it is significant (laughs) And I have predictions that relate to it. So all I'm saying right now is there's a bridge. No, I want to hear your predictions first. No, no. That- no, Preet, I actually, I think it's it's relevant that I hear them first. Okay. Why? <laughs> you might find out why if you okay. tell me your predictions. Fine. Okay. I think that it's freaking Jaken. That's one Who's of my... It's Jaken. Jaken is why this guy dies but Jaken kills Pate is one of my predictions okay how do I have to okay there's a lot of different thoughts and none of them make sense do I have no to give me the thoughts I need the okay. thoughts um Jaken kills Pate that's basically the thought Jaken so, is here Jaken he's he's acting like the alchemist Sure. Or he is the alchemist. Sure. Yeah. Or he is, or is he down the street like shooting a dart, poison dart? Like he you know I think I haven't decided that yet. Um cuz it could be cuz cuz at the end he doesn't say like the alchemist speaks to, like the cuz he says like I don't a understand. Voice said. And then yeah, he says a voice said so I don't think that we, uh, well, I, I don't think I know at all. So it could be the voice of somebody other than the alchemist. Exactly. Like there's a second person exactly. there. Exactly. Either way, I think that Jaken is involved in this scene. Okay. That, that's but my, where like, main... that happens, that's like in a back alley. They're so far from the bridge. I know, but the bridge is like, and like, Jaken can be bridge hopping. 
Okay. Is what I'm saying. Like, that was the bridge, and now he's at this bridge. Sure. Cool. Yeah, moving on. Okay. So he's walking down, and he's hearing the seps ring their bells for the morning, and he's also hearing the red priests praying at the at the wharf side because this is like a trading town so they have all sorts of religions and temples and people you know because yeah. they have a lot of visitors so i kind of like that actually yeah and yeah we learn about how like old stones better than king's landing and blah 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 <laughs> Um, sorry, I just, like, kept saying blah until I could scroll down past that part. Oh <laughs> so gosh. it was just a longer part than I anticipated. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so he, like, trips over the cobblestones. And as he's trying to get up, the, the alchemist arrives and is like, there you are. And Pate's like, well, where were you? And the guy's like, well... I don't want to interrupt your friends, obviously. And also, yeah, like, Pate, what was he going to, like, come up to you be like, I got to talk in private about the secret mission. And then his <laughs> friends were just going to be like, yeah, go talk in private about your secret mission and don't tell us anything about it. Yeah, it, Pate wasn't... Not an academic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shots so... fired. <laughs> but... Yeah, I don't I, I don't okay. I don't know why I'm being this mean. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, random detail. That literally does not matter. Um, the dude in charge of this town, Lord Layton, hasn't yeah. High Tower. Yeah, he hasn't been down here in a decade. He hasn't left his tower in a decade, yeah. What? Yeah. He, so he just like plays Xbox all day up there? Like what <laughs> like what are we are we moving around? Are we getting our steps in? I don't know. We don't know, like, what kind of health he's in. or Is he if dead he, like... and they've hidden it? Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. Like, what's you know going what? on? I don't know. Do you actually not know? Or are you just saying? No, I really don't know. Really? That's really funny. Yeah, now I'm... That's, that's why I'm trying to think, like, am I forgetting something that I should know? Because I know about the Red Wines, who are, like, across the way from Old Town, like, real nearby yeah and they have those twins that got prison in prison not in prison but like kept or kept hostage by cersei yeah but that's the red wine so that's not the high towers so i don't remember what the high towers do interesting also they're called the red wines but they produce arbor gold <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fine the red was taken you know they had yeah, to switch well, it up yeah. But they already had the name. They couldn't switch that to gold wines. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's some kind of backstory there. So now we have a flashback from Pate stealing this key uh -huh. from this box under the maester's um, bed. And apparently, okay, so the lock on the thing was already broken because the maester walgrave broke it himself because he forgot the key to it although maester gorman the guy who stands in for him blamed pate uh -huh. for breaking it but pate's like i didn't break it he broke it i had this weird suspicion like did a third person break this because say pate finds it broken he's probably gonna think that walgrave was looking for it and you know couldn't find the key so he broke it so was there another person that was trying to get into his box? Ooh, and um, interesting. Maybe. I don't know. But like what but the key's still there, so what did they get? I don't know. Maybe maybe it's nothing. Yeah. And I'm like I'm doing that thing where I'm suspicious of everything, <laughs> you know? I think you might be. I think probably, but it was just a weird detail that's still. Like, out it's to me. definitely possible. It's definitely a George R. R. Martin style twist. Yeah. But I I don't feel like it that's what it is in this case. But I could totally be wrong. I literally yeah, don't like, even know how like, the series it goes. It doesn't You know what? I've been reading a bunch of Agatha Christie. I think that might also have to do with it. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
That's funny. Because <laughs> there's like no detail in those books that's like never that never comes back. Like yeah, it, they're very economical in that way. Like yeah, it, only stuff that's important is ever mentioned. Right. So if you ever get a description of somebody and it's like blonde hair, like you know the blonde hair is going to be relevant. <laughs> right. That's so funny. Yeah. Um. Okay, moving on. So in this box, he finds a bag of silver stags, which he also takes, uh-huh. a lock of yellow hair tied up in a ribbon. Oh, I wonder, like, if that's, like, a family member or, like, a loved one or somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this guy's so old. I Like, that. that's the saddest thing about getting old. And you know what? We're not even that old, but I'm, I don't remember a lot of things, right? Yeah. Like, we just forget things. I know. It's, and, like, imagine having, you know, Alzheimer's or dementia, whatever, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. No, some really sad thoughts for 3 a.m. Okay, move on. <laughs> um, there's a picture of, like, a woman who resembles Walgrave, so, like, a sibling probably, and a knight's gauntlet that Walgrave claimed had been given to him from a prince. And this made me be like, this guy's old. Maester Aemon is old. Maester Aemon had brothers who were princes, and he was at the Citadel. <gasps> oh my god. Maybe I'm, once again, I'm drawing more connections no, no, than no. I need to be. I feel like that one is cool. Right? I like that. So, like, like I feel like the timelines would line up with this guy being in school at the same time as Maester Aemon. Yeah. And maybe they were friends. Like, who knows, right? Yeah. Oh, like maybe so when he sent sent like the raven to indicate like autumn or winter or whatever, it Maester Aemon got it, but it was sent to him by his friend. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable. I love yeah, that. Yeah, but so inside this gauntlet is where the key is hidden, and it's this heavy iron, black iron key that opens every door in the citadel. And only the Archmaesters had the key, but also all the Archmaesters had the key. <laughs> so that's a lot. Oh my gosh. Um, so he he follows the alchemist to like this alley. They're just like, we got to get to a more discreet place, right? And yeah. the alchemist goes and stops in this small alley and Pate's like, okay, we got to stop now, even though they've already stopped. Like he's, he's acting like he has any control over the situation which just makes it so sad you know oh i don't know i know this was like yeah Yeah. sad sad is the word (laughs) so he's got this uh key hidden up his sleeves you know he's got tricks up his sleeves and the tricks are this key hidden in the pockets because they got cool pockets and cool sleeves okay move the fuck on <laughs> throw back um, to, throw back to our conversation from three years ago when you said that more like four years ago at this point. <laughs> when you said that the most maesters had cool pockets <laughs> yeah so so he's like before i give you the key though i want to see that coin i want to check it oh, and God. the alchemist is like fine here's the coin so pate grabs it and he bites it despite not knowing what he's actually looking for. Cause, okay, so I think the purpose of biting the coin is to... Because, like, if it's real hard, then it's likely gold, you know? Yeah. As opposed to, like, chocolate coins or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, oh, I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, But he does it because that's the thing you do when you get a gold coin but he's never held a gold coin before so he doesn't know oh the sky man (laughs) um so but then he's like what is it that you want are you looking for some you know some of those old valerian scrolls or like what is it that you want from the citadel yeah and the alchemist is like fuck off like it's none (laughs) none yeah it's none your business (laughs) Oh my gosh. So, Pate, like, his final request is, you gotta show me your face. Yeah. And he pulls down his hood, and it's just a guy, uh, a young man, 
a young man's face, ordinary with full cheeks and the shadow of a beard. A scar showed faintly on his right cheek. He had a hooked nose and a mat of dense black hair that curled tightly around his ears. It was not a face Pate recognized. And then, so he's like, I don't know you. Who are you? A stranger. No one, truly. (laughs) (laughs) Pate's like, okay, I guess. Here's the key. See ya. So he turns to leave. And he's as he's walking, his feet get real heavy and he, he can feel his heart hammering and he can't, he doesn't get what's happening. And he's like, what's happening? I don't understand. And never will, a voice said sadly. Ooh. The cobblestones rushed up to kiss him. Pate tried to cry for help, but his voice was failing too. His last thought was of Rosie. Oh my god. Wait, sorry. One random thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, Edmir's wife. What's her name again? Rosalind Frey. Okay, cause the rosy Rosalind connection. Yeah, was... but I'm pretty sure Rosalind is older and more mature at age sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Just the rosy Rosalind, and I know Edmir yeah. doesn't die, but you know everyone else does, so he may as well have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, that, I was just thinking of that, which is a little, a little irrelevant, but I wanted to draw that line. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I just, I haven't, I, this was, this, I had a lot of thoughts here. I don't. So do you want to share those thoughts before I, sh- I share some thoughts? Can you start and then I no. can interject? No, because Because you're sharing off your... of mine. <laughs> well, like, whatever sure. I say, then you might be like, oh, no, that's interesting. No, what I say will impact what you say. Oh, whatever. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, but you have to help me because I'm lost. Okay, and I, have I so shall many help. Thoughts. Okay, yay. Okay. Sorry, this page is full of thoughts, so I'm just trying to think of, like, what to do. Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'll start with the Jaken stuff, because I've already sure. said it, so it's already out mm-hmm. there. Okay. Okay. So, um, I have multiple thoughts regarding what this could be and how this could have gone down and what's going on. Right. None of them are fleshed out, which is why there's multiple, because I was yeah, like- Yeah, just give me the fragments. You know? So, the Jaken one is the most strong one. Which isn't saying anything. Yeah, yeah, that Jaken is here, whether he's the alchemist yeah. or the other person yeah. or something. Yeah, and here's some of what I think is... So the bridge is important to me because of the prophecy. And I know that we've established, like, the prophecy is the drowned god. Crow, yes. But I also think that the bridge can be reused, okay? Sure. Um, so that's a thing. Um, the who are you? A stranger. No one truly... No one truly faceless man. <laughs> it was spelled out. It was very much spelled out. However, interjection, question. Am I confusing this with another series? Or is there a thing in this universe called strangers? Or a group of people called strangers? There is the stranger, which is one of the seven gods. Okay, and I is think like that's the what god I'm of death. Of. Yeah. Oh. Okay, that's definitely what I'm thinking of. Because I'm like, I swear, like, when he said stranger, I was like, that means something to me, but I don't know what. Okay, (laughs) that to me, maybe I'm Delulu, but that to me is just further, like, faceless man killing people, you know? He's Mm -hmm. given us all the hits, okay? Um, sorry, I'm gonna write that down as evidence for my (laughs) own theory. Yes, go ahead. Okay. So that, um, another thing that I'm thinking of is, uh, brain. Okay, so the method of death, right? When Jaken was killing for Arya, this I could totally be wrong about, because it's not like I went back and checked this. But from what I remember- When he was the death genie. When he was the death genie. All of the deaths were very much, like, ordinary things that were happening oh yeah like 
It could have just like yeah, who done it? No exactly. one exactly. Like <laughs> wasn't one of the guys just like like it, it just it was all where it was, a like, dog attacked one of them. Another one like fell off a tower or something. Yeah. So to me, this was like another one of those where it's like even as the alchemist walks up, he trips over a stone. Who's to say that wasn't part of it? You know, like and then he dies by the tr- stone tripping as like all of the heart stuff too but if someone were to see it it would just look like he just had a really bad fall or something you know so i feel like the ordinary making the death look ordinary is also very classic jaken as we know mm-hmm. um the whole coin symbolism is also very jaken um and in terms of why this is happening that's where I'm lost as to why Jaken's doing this. But I think this is the conclusion I've narrowed it down to, okay? Hear mm-hmm. me out. So you know how we had that whole debate about, not debate, but had that whole conversation about like, okay, well, if he's a faceless man, why would he go and get himself caught and be in the dungeons for in so long? In the dungeons, all that, yeah. Right? But also, my counter to that is, if he, so this guy's Jaken, he's a faceless man. And he helps Arya by being Death Genie, and he claims it's because she saved his life, right? Mm hmm. So, there's two options here. Either being Arya's Death Genie was part of the plan all along, which I don't right. think is what's happening, but that's but possible. But he would have to predict a lot of other exactly. things. Exactly. But... I don't think that's possible, but I'm just, I'm just putting it out there to make my other thing make sense. So, either yeah. that, or. Arya really did have control in that moment of him being able to escape. So if he's all magical and he can do all these things and he had that restriction of Arya having to save his life, I think to me that's enough of like him having to have been caught in the crypts if he got caught. Do you know what I'm saying? The fact that like Arya had... or The The fact that Arya could bind him with like this kind of promise means that he could be bound by real chains <laughs> yes but also the fact that because you know the whole thing was like there was like a fire or something and they had to escape right and he was yeah. trapped so yes. if he couldn't just get out of there then clearly he's not magical he just has like he's not all encompassing magic yeah okay know? yeah he can't like vanish, vanish. Poof yeah. out of places okay. or maybe he can and he just couldn't show people Right. But either way, whether he can magic out of there and he couldn't show people, or he's literally not able to magic, either way, that to me is enough evidence that he got caught, he could have gotten caught and had to be in King's Landing. Okay. So that's my defense. That his mission wasn't in King's Landing or like wasn't in the dungeons, but... He could have gotten caught and put in the dungeons. That's how I'm resolving I, that conflict. No, I I like that. I like okay. your thoughts. You're thank, so smart. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, I like that. Thanks for the hype. Um, okay, because that was really eating at me because I was like, how can it be Jaken? So I needed to solve that. So now that we're yeah. past that conflict, the thing of like, okay, well, why is he here? And what about the whole um, Balon dying theory? I think, yeah. okay, faceless men could have been multiple missions, you know? So I, I still believe the whole, like, Balon theory. Um, uh-huh. But I think that after doing that, he's now made his way here. Because um, you know how there was the whole thing of, like, then he disappeared after Balon died? Wasn't that a part of the thing? I don't know if we ever... Okay, like, maybe I made that up. We I don't know if... We don't... We never get confirmation that he was for sure there. That's just a guess. Right. Okay, <laughs> you know? well, okay, cool. So I think he's now here, right? And in terms of why, I have a couple of thoughts. Um, A, these are all random. This is where my theories fall It's okay. Apart. Okay. I'm going- you got to give me the thoughts and less of the, like, warm up to the thoughts because I'm going to fall asleep because it is 2.52 a.m. <laughs> okay. So I think what co- one of the things that could have happened is he's there in King's Landing He's doing God knows what. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and maybe he hears about the Danny rumors when we were hearing about the Danny rumors and stuff, right? Right. Because like he her joining with the Dothraki and yeah. having a kid and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So maybe he hears about those things and then he gets locked up. 
Um, and now he's, and now he's out, and now he can, like, where was I going with this? I didn't write it down. There was a reason I did this. Okay, wait, hold up. Now he's here because the people here are looking into Danny? I think so, yeah. I think that's where I was going with that. I didn't write it down, so I can't remember. I think that's where I was going with that. Like, it's like that connection of, like, the Danny dragons. And, he, and like, I think the person who hired him is... Because Faceless Man, like, someone hired him. So I think the person yeah. who hired him is really interested in, like, the Danny stuff. Okay. He could have also been in King's Landing, and after the Danny stuff happened, someone employed him there. Like, okay. let's say it was Varys. Like, just... Throwing right. a name out there. Let's say it was Varys. Finds him in King's Landing. Appoints him there. He gets caught. Has to now catch up on his missions. Mm-hmm. And now he's here doing the Danny stuff. So I feel like it could be that. Um, but where I get confused is the whole key stuff. Like, I don't know what he would be looking yeah. for. What he's going for. The only thing I can think also, of. Also, like, why can't he just steal the key himself? Right, if it's, um, I think the only thing if I can think every of- every maester, archmaester has it, and some of them are definitely not keeping it as well. I think, um, all I can think of for that is that, like, maybe for some reason it's, like, like, um, Marv, like, what I keep coming back to is Marvin as, like, like, maybe the person's trying to, like, kill Marvin or something, so they can't okay. get too close. Like, maybe this is the safest Archmaester, or, like, going through Pate is, like, the safest way to do it. Um. But how are they- how does getting the key lead to killing the mage? Because now he has the key to go anywhere. Okay. Like, he can- because from what I understand, like... But why not get that key on your own? Like, why get paid to do it? Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> I literally have no idea. You I'm know what? Blank. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I think it's 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 important enough that we raise the question and now we move on. Yeah. Um, Is that the summary of your thoughts? That's the summary of my thoughts. Um, let me just double check. Uh, and then I was just thinking, like, just trying to think about the stuff. I'm like, hey, who hates the Septons and wants something? And all I can no, think of is like... Maesters. Maesters. Or, yeah, sorry. I don't know why I said Septon. Who hates Maesters? And all, oh, like, I don't know. The only person I can think of is Melisandre. I'm like... Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe Melisandre. Well, she specifically hates that they're all like refusing of her knowledge and like magic and that kind of thing. Yeah. Right? So maybe she wants like... You know how he was talking, like, he's like, oh, do you want an old scroll or something? Well, so maybe Mel there's... Saunders from Ashai, so maybe she's also met the mage. Like, we've never been in her head, who knows? That's possible. That is true. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Then another part of me thinks, like, maybe it is, like, an item that they're trying to steal. Like, there's something locked up that has a prophecy about yeah. what happens maybe when it the is dragons like a Valerian... come back. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So maybe that's what it is. And maybe it's, like, Melisandre wants to get that. Without having to, like, ask them for it or something. I don't know. That's a possibility. So Melisandre is the one who has hired him now? Could be. I'm telling you. I have. Okay. I'm just putting No, it no, no. There. I like it. Um, I'm just. So that's possible. You never said it. You just kind of, like. <laughs> Implied it. Yeah. So yeah. that. Um, and then another thing is, like, maybe they want to steal, like, top secret potions or something. Maybe there's, like, some potions that are, like, so dangerous that they don't want people to get their hands on. And someone's trying to get their hands on them. And they hired Jaken. Um, and then the only other thought I had was, um, you know how Dindarian is like on his last life and we theorize that he's now dead because he wasn't in the epilogue? Sure. Yeah. Or I theorize that, you know. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, Okay. (laughs) And we also didn't see Thoros there. So we're like, what's Thoros up to? What's this? Who's in charge? What's going on? Right. Why is Catelyn here? So maybe... Thoros is trying to get some sort of potion or something to bring Dendarian back. So this is where Thoros has hired. Yes. <laughs> this guy. Um, and he's going to find this potion in the place that denies all magic. Yeah. 
Um, I never said it made sense. I told you the only one that makes oh, no, sense no, no, no. is Jaquette. Honestly, that makes sense. It would be so right for them to be sitting on like a hoard of magic while like being like Denying magic it. don't exist. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think those are my three like. Why did I say magic don't exist? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. This is like you. What did you? How did you greet me today in text? Oh yeah. You said. Oh, I said hi, homiesicle. <laughs> Oh. You know, like a popsicle, but a homiesicle. <laughs> or like a bicycle, but a homiesicle. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was fun. You never acknowledged it, so. Well, you literally said, don't talk about it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Did I say that? I don't remember that. Really? Okay. <laughs> Hi, homiesicle. Dead skull, dead skull, dead skull. Don't ask me why I said that. It was an impulsive desire. <laughs> I never said I was embarrassed about it. You just made that up. Well, I don't know how to interpret the dead skulls otherwise. <laughs> no, that's just, that's my like, this thing is funny, but I can't laugh face. That's usually what my dead skull means. What? Yeah, it's like my like, <laughs> that's usually my dead skull. What? Yes. Okay, whatever. We're not talking about emojis right now. Okay, okay. are you are you done? I, are you done? I have one more thought. Um, okay, this this makes no sense, but just in case, I'm throwing it out there, okay? Mm-hmm. He had a hooked nose. Who do we know that has a hooked nose? The O family. Severus Snape. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Sorry, who? The O, what did... the o family, like the Oswells or Osgrays or whatever. Oh, okay. Then, <laughs> yeah, sure. So I was like, maybe this is a Littlefinger thing. Because do you remember how we were like, Littlefinger, you know how someone theorized that Littlefinger hired Jaken for Varys because Littlefinger knew that a faceless man Ver- was expensive to yes, hire? Yes, yes. So maybe Littlefinger hired this and this is like Oswell and then Jaken was the one down like the corridor or something. And the person we saw with the hooked nose was the one of the O guys. Which okay. also completely improbable because they're all in King's Landing. However, just throw it There might there. be another like fourth one, you know? Okay, true. And <laughs> there was a dad, maybe there's an uncle. <laughs> <laughs> true. No, but this is like this guy's young, so maybe like a cousin. True. Um, the only thing I can't place is it says that there's a scar shown faintly on the right cheek. Do we know of any people who have a faint scar? I just know Tyrion has a bunch of scars. Yeah, well, let Okay, is that the end of your thoughts? Because yes. then I can... Yeah. Okay, pay attention to that description. Okay. Read it over for me real quick. Just like a speed read. He was just a man, and his face was just a face. A young man's face, ordinary, with full cheeks and the shadow of a beard. A scar showed faintly on his right cheek. He had a hooked nose and a mat of dense black hair that curled tightly around his ears. It was not not a face Pate recognized. Cool. Now here is an excerpt from A Clash of Kings, Chapter 47. Jaken passed a hand down his face from forehead to chin, and where it went he changed. His cheeks grew fuller, his eyes closer, his nose hooked. A scar appeared on his right cheek where no scar had been before. And when he shook his head, his long straight hair, half red and half white, dissolved away to reveal a cap of tight black curls. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa! Oh my god! It's him! I wish, you know, you know, one of the things I would change, I suck at remembering people's character descriptions. Like, it took Uh me, like, two books to remember that Sansa had red hair and that Catelyn had red (laughs) hair. And that's, like, the most prominent feature that they talk about all the time. Yeah. And I feel like my life would be easier with this series if I would just remember what people looked like. Like, in this case, I had to really guess that it was Jaquette. I couldn't just look at it and tell Yeah, no, but you did some good detective work, honestly. I did, but it would be so much easier if I could remember what people looked like. Yeah, but, like, nobody remembers it. This is, like, when somebody is, like, once again, rereading, re-reading and, and like, like making through. connections. <laughs> okay, slay. Yay. Okay, I like when you just tell me things. It makes me happy. <laughs> well, this one, I didn't like, I was going to tell you regardless, but you got there on your own. I so. did. Slay. I'm so smart. Oh, yeah. Okay, slay. 
Um, so that voice, that's just Jaken, and it just randomly says voice as opposed to saying the alchemist voice. Okay, cool. Love. No, that's a question. Oh. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Sorry. Alchemist voice? <laughs> what? I know that's like, because like at the end of a question, you're supposed to like oh. raise your, you know? So I just raised it for the last second. Okay. <laughs> Alchemist voice. <laughs> okay. Um. Um. I think so, so. Like, yeah, I think so. It could also just be like some sidekick, you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, either way, I don't think this is someone who's like super important, you know. No offense, All right. homie. All right, homie. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. Okay. I need you to give me predictions for all the characters in a succinct manner. Okay, I will try. I'm hoping you have sentences on that notebook of yours that you can um, read to me. There's bullet forms, but I can try for sentences. Yeah, like, let's not veer off too off topic unless I say so. <laughs> okay, dictator. Like, if something of yours doesn't make sense, then I will be like, but how though? And watch me do that for Every each of the ones. One. But, okay. <laughs> but like... Okay, I'm... Yeah, and we're gonna do this for... Okay... Did you? I only did I the ones remember. you told me, but I did all of oh, them. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's good. In the wrap-up episode, did we ask you which POVs you want to see? Or did I say we're going to do that in the prologue? I have no idea. I just remember you did ask me... I do remember, I don't know, but I do remember something similar to that, but I don't know if that was exactly what you asked. Because I remember answering something along the lines of like, what do you want these people to do? And I remember you like trying to get it out of me, Mm -hmm. but I don't know if it was exactly that. Fuck, I wish I remember things. Okay, okay, however... Wait, okay, wait, give me a second. Because that was an episode I edited, so I probably have chapter markers. Okay. (laughs) Give me a second. Okay, I think we skipped it. Okay, wait, let me double check. So, um... Game of Four What? Quizzing Harmit. Emails from listeners, theory, emails from like cra- <laughs> Harmit's crackpot corner. I can't believe I put Okay. There is nine minutes of us talking about book four questions, but it's only nine minutes. Mm. So I don't know if I don't think you did. Okay, how about we do a quick yeah, let's do let's try to do it quickly. I don't think you did. Anyway. Yeah. Cause uh, there's questions here that I remember I had like an itemized list and the very last and part of it was qu- there was, was next book questions, there was but questions I but like I said it was only nine minutes so I think you only asked like like you might not have done that you might have been like okay you know what I'm gonna ask them again because it doesn't matter maybe you maybe you'll say a different thing and then you'll get like double credit like, you know, <gasps> true I like that okay um, yeah, let's do questions first and then specific characters. Yeah. No, let's do specific characters because you're going to read them anyway. And then if some of the questions get answered, then we'll just be like, it was answered. Okay, yeah. sure. All right. So give me your list of characters. Give me name. Give me predictions. Okay, cool. Um, do you need me to list everyone first or can I just go? No, just say the you name of the people. character and okay. then. John, my Lord Commander. Slay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, becomes Lord Commander. Duh. Stannis, um, gives him the cold shoulder. Um, him and Stannis start trying to figure out the compromise, like you know what the Free Folk people with want, the Free Folk, yeah. What Stannis and you know meet in the middle. But the thing is, as he's gonna be trying to compromise, everyone's gonna be like. You're just loyal to the free folk, and that's why you keep saying all these things. So that's going to be a significant hurdle. 
Um, they're basically just going to be like, traitor, you suck. Um, yeah. Alistair and Jano Slint are going to add fuel to that flame. Mm-hmm. Um, and there might be an attempt on his life. John's life? Yes. From who? I don't know. That's all I have. Okay. Why, why do you say that? I just, I just. Like, why do you say specifically attempt on life as opposed to like, he's going to fight, you know, more and be in danger? Because I think that people are like really, really, really biased against free folk. And I think that like with the direction that I hope John goes, I just feel like it'll end up with, you know, when Chet was like, Let's do this against the, like, you know what ended up happening when the Lord Commander died? Yeah. I feel like, I fear. Mutiny. (laughs) Yeah, that. I fear that just because of people's strong, terrible opinions. Okay. That. So, so those are your predictions? Um, and then the only other thing, um, he's gonna have an assistant, and I don't know who yet. Maybe, like, Sam or Gren. I like that one. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe Sam or Gren or someone. You know what would be really funny? I was thinking, maybe he makes someone who doesn't like him his assistant, so that, like, do you know what I mean? They have to deal with him, and yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, questions. So these things, like, how successful are each of these gonna be? So, him and Stannis working together to figure out a solution. Successful or not? Successful until someone tries to kill him. Maybe that's a setback. Okay, so, yeah, like, someone tries to kill him. Are they successful or no, not? No, no, I couldn't handle okay. that. I would die. And then, what was the other thing? Oh, um, Alistair and Janus. what's his face trying to, like, sabotage him. Yeah. Is that going to be successful or not? Maybe semi-successful, like, at some parts. Okay, cool. Next person. Sam. Um, yeah. Doing his job. Uh, as per Maybe usual. being John's assistant. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think he'll be able to succeed with the whole Gilly's kid mission. Uh, oh, sending the kid to his father and all of that. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, he's going to get more self-confidence. Because especially in the... He's already been doing so much. But especially in, like, the back half of book three, like, Sam was pulling for everything Mm -hmm. and, like, succeeding. And I really, you know... So character growth for Sam. Yes, I'm making a happy prediction. And then I'm making a sad prediction that maybe Maester Aemon starts having some health issues. So he starts training Sam maybe, like, more intensely to be able to, like, take over and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, Maester Aemon at the end of the day is, like, a hundred. Like, come on. Yeah. Well, maybe one of these kids who's here will get sent to the wall as replacement. But I don't know actually how the, that works. Like whether they have to like, because if they were there at the wall, they have to like swear the oath and like do the whole wall thing. Yeah. So it's like double. It's mace, tough. Double I guess oath. they haven't had to worry about it for the last while because Mr. A- yeah. Mr. Amon like wanted to. He's or, holding like, down whatever. the fort. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. He's so cool. Yeah. Anyway, He's interesting so cool. question. If like Alaris shows up there, you yeah. Know? <laughs> oh my god, I would literally die of happiness. John and Alaris. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. Make those. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Slash fix of John and Alaris. That's so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> literally go off, sir. Okay. Um, <laughs> we love you, Yaya. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> it's just in appreciation we say these things. It's, yes. it's amazing. It's, yes. Um, okay, Davos is next. Um, he's gonna, <laughs> I put stopping Stannis from starting more fires, basically. Um, which is a reference to like Melisandre's fires, but also like doing bad just shit. Just in general fucking shit yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. So I thought that was cute. Um, I think he's gonna become buddies with John and Sam. So he's going to show up to the wall then. Yeah. Um, and maybe he starts having some, like, healing on his family wounds and his self wounds. I'm I'm just wishing, like, happiness for all these people. I'm trying, <laughs> at least. Because maybe they can't get it for reality, but maybe they can just get it in my hopes, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. That's Davos. That's basically it. He doesn't do anything big, apparently. I mean, I don't need him to do anything. As long as he's just himself, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh my god, so true. 
Because, like, any scene, like, take Davos, put him into any scene, and just have him, like, be the voice of reason. Like, Basically, how can you go wrong, exactly, you know? Exactly. Okay, next is Stannis. Um, whining continues, arguing with everybody. Um, he's doing his plans. And the only, like, big real thing I have for him is that he might... Because you know how he was going to try and win the throne, and that was the big plot point. But then mm-hmm. he Davos reads the letter, and he basically was like, oh, we should probably do that first so we have a kingdom yeah. to defend. And if I'm Azor Ahai, I gotta be, you know, good. Um, yes. So he's doing that. So maybe while he's here dealing with that, he can do some smear campaigns against <laughs> the Lannister family while, like, strike while the iron's hot. So he's going to do some some more smear campaigns yeah. against them. That's basically my He has also got to face off against the Boltons because they're technically in charge of the North now, but he yes. wants the support of the North. Yes, he does have to do that. And now without John, he's going to have to figure without it out. Without John? Or not without John. Like, without John being in his King of the North position, he's going to have to deal with that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, and then we have Melisandre... Um, the one thing that I had for her, um, was, <laughs> so, question. Yeah. You know how, okay, how do I ask this? So can Mel, I wonder, out into the void, can Melisandra do what, like, a dragon glass or fire can, like, obviously she can probably do what fire can. Oh, like, if she lit another on fire, will it kill another? Yeah. What can she do? I don't do? know. Does she have the same level of power as the obsidian? Or, like, she definitely has the same level of power as an ordinary fire, for sure, right? Yes. But I wonder if she can function as dragon glass. <laughs> yeah, like, you know? a weapon against the others, like, or straight up. Or is she just, like, Pokemon trainer energy? Which is why she has to put so much training, or not training, but, like, she's putting so much into this Azora High and the sword and stuff. Like, maybe her stuff is all show. And when it comes to, like, the real, like, threats that go beyond... She needs somebody else to bring the firepower. Yeah. She's got, like, the fire crackers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I wonder. So I think depending on that, my answer changes. Like, I, I don't think she can be Dragon Glass. I think if she could, like... I don't know. Maybe she can. I don't know. I keep changing my mind. But maybe we'll see her, like, try. Maybe there will be a situation in which she has Mm -hmm. to try and we'll find out. Yeah. That's basically my prediction for her. Yeah. You'll notice how I made this list. I was, like, real specific. I, like, started at the North, right? I was, like, real specific. By the end, I was, like, the Lannisters, the Tyrells, (laughs) the whoever. You just everyone we missed. (laughs) Yeah. I I just, like, group people by family as opposed to, like, going individual characters. Okay. So, Bran finally meeting this goddamn crow or eagle or what is it three-eyed crow three-eyed crow. crow crow getting some wisdom i hope that he gets to learn like more stories about like ned and holland reed and potentially john's heritage because mm-hmm. maybe holland reed cool. told his kids so maybe bran will know yeah. um and then he'll probably do some more warging Hopefully it'll be consensual. Um, and I also want, like, I don't know how to say this, but I want him to, like, see the magical stuff that's coming back. Because I think a lot, like, other than the others and Like, the have whites, visions of it? Or, visions? like, come across it in person? Both. Okay. Both. I want more visions and I want him to come across it. Like, you okay. know how we're like, there haven't been children in the forest in thousands of years. Maybe children of the forest are coming back. Yeah. Maybe he meets okay. a child of the forest. Cool. They are, like, north of the wall now, so that's where shit can happen. Yeah. Question. In terms of, like, consensual working, like, you're anticipating that, like, in terms of Hodor, or do you see him doing it with other human beings. I feel like knowing Bran, he will try to do it with others. What do what do you mean by knowing Bran? He's like a child 
And I don't, like, when he did it with Hodor, he didn't seem to get, like, oh, maybe I should. Like, there was no, like, oh, wait, Hodor. Like, he doesn't understand the consequences, so. Yeah, so I think he'll he just might keep just... doing it, because okay. then he, like, yeah. he, it, it's more freedom than he has had, because right now he's only been warging into, like, an animal, right? So it's, like, at the end of the day, he's the animal. Like, if, like, if Summer wants to go frickin' chase a like if hu- summer's hungry like bran has to go do that you know yeah but if hodor is hungry <laughs> <laughs> yeah that too he also but... gotta go eat like yeah yeah but maybe his control over whoever he's working into will grow or whatever i don't yeah. know i don't know if i want it i mean uh, for summer it would be i guess fine but like yeah hodor definitely not yeah i just um, don't know Okay, I don't know move how on. That <laughs> yeah. Before I get too far into this. Okay, uh-huh. Roos Bolton and Ramsey. Okay, I have a little theory before I get into them. Yeah. This goes way back. Sure. Okay. Do you remember? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> when was it Lady Smallwood who Ramsey tried to like marry and shit? And, like Hornwood. Cut off her okay, it was Lady Hornwood. Okay, wait one second. Um, Lady Hornwood. Okay, so do you remember when that whole fiasco happened with the Lady Hornwood? Yeah. And then our north northern people had to go deal with that. So then we had less defenses and all of that. And then we finally like caught the caught Ramsey, and then Ramsey showed up. All of that. Yeah. I feel like it was a setup. For what? Do you remember before? We were like, we didn't know whether Bolton was in on it because we didn't know that Bolton was like a bad guy yet or like he was playing both sides yet. Because back then we were like, maybe his kids just gone rogue trying to impress him or something. Yeah. So now I feel much more confident that it was both of them. So he told Ramsay to take over the Hornwood estate and marry her and torture her. Yeah. And shit. Okay. And kill her. Okay. To fuck up all of that further. Yeah. Um, fuck up the Starks, all that. Anyway, so that was my theory that I just wanted that makes to sense. Yes, the theory makes sense. Um, so I think they're still gonna have the captives. I mean, Bruce Bolton's married now, so maybe we'll see married life. Um, yeah. Then, um. Okay, go ahead. And then, okay, so Tywin is gone. Yes. Um. So maybe they'll just keep like keep keep. Maybe now they'll be like. Hey Tyrells, you were with Tywin. Hop on board, you know, because they still need that like connection, and I feel like they'll right. still keep yeah. the connection with like the Cersei and you know whatever it is. Yeah, whoever is left in yeah. King's Landing. Yeah. So I think, um, but I also think I anticipate with the other families. I feel like other people will now that like Joffrey's dead and stuff. Like other people, or sorry, now that Tywin is dead, other people will come in and try to like like shirk whatever get a power share of that can. power yeah. yeah so i think because of that Roos bolton will just continue playing whatever whatever sides pop up he'll start like jumping like building connections there in case they win so i think like so like stannis yeah let's say stannis starts coming in on the action like um he might, okay. but actually i don't think it would be i think it could be stannis yeah and that would solve stannis's problem of like who rules the north but I think what he could also do, or well, no, I think what he could also do, um, what Roos Bolton could also do, is specifically for like, um, what are they called? The Martells. Let's say the Martells try to make Marcella. Like the Dornish. Yeah, the Dornish. Okay. So maybe like playing that side of it instead of okay. just being on the yeah. Lannister side. I definitely see Bolton doing that. Um, and then Zombie Catelyn. Wait. Gotta pause. Okay. You're forgetting something here. Yeah. Roos Bel- Bolton has a certain delivery of a certain fake Arya coming. <gasps> oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. Okay, wait. So that was, there's a fake Arya coming and fake Arya marries Ramsay? I think that's the plan, yeah. So I guess that happens. Will anybody realize that this ain't the Arya? I don't the think Arya? so, especially now that we know Jaquen's on the other side. 
because before I was hoping that like Arya would show yeah. up at the wall and like we know that that was actually the true Arya because John's literally there. But now I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, well, Arya's literally on the other side of Westeros. <laughs> so I think this happens. And I think they get to say, we have Arya. Yay. Okay. Wow. All I right. forgot about that. That's so sad. <laughs> oh, God. Glad to add to your contemplations sad contemplations Thank you so much how kind of you so zombie catlin zombie catlin okay so they've killed two of the phrase phrase probably aren't gonna fall for the exact same thing again so i think now they're gonna start like like instead of like hey we have your person come get them it'll be more like there's a fray working out in the field Go target the fray. Come back. Like, you know, more like targeted attacks. Yes. Going up yeah, the ladder. Just like finding opportunities to get yeah, them. And going up the ladder and slowly scaring the phrase. Mm. Um, and I, okay, I anticipate um, a very dramatic final zombie Catelyn act with um, like her... I mean, she can't like die. final in this book or like final final, final Catelyn act. Okay, final zombie yeah. Catelyn that we've seen will be yeah. It'll be like a fellow. It'll be like one of her kids who ends up convincing the zombie Catelyn to be put down. Wait, he ends up convincing who that zombie needs to like be Thoros put down? or something. Okay, it'll be like a. It'll be like a. This isn't my mother. You know, like, this is wrong. You need to, you know, it'll be like this whole dramatic thing. And then, like, Thoros or someone yeah. will do it. Maybe, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Leah shared that alternative list of alternative choices that George had, like storylines that George had for some characters. And one of them was Arya gets mad at Catelyn for letting Jamie go and kills her or something. No, it was like she said, oh, I'll, if that's true, I'll kill her myself. Right. So Arya comes across Catelyn and is like, but would Arya be like, Thoros, kill her instead of just being like, I'm going to kill her? Well, Arya might realize, like, it maybe it needs, like, the magic or something. Like, maybe she can't just, oh, like... Oh, okay. Like, maybe the zombie yeah, death... kill her for good instead of the... Yeah, instead of the, oh, she could be revived, and then I walk away, and then they revive her again, you know? Right. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, so I anticipate that... that. Um, and then, so guerrilla warfare plus a dramatic ending. Yeah, they're just gonna try and kill everybody, and then eventually, like, some Stark's gonna have to come and talk, knock sense and be mm-hmm. like, "This isn't what my father sent I you." I really for. want her to like meet John before that happens. I though. do. I really do too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, that's basically my zombie Catelyn thoughts. Yeah. Um, so next, and then next is Arya. Okay. Uh, Arya is with Jaken. Uh, Mm -hmm. They're at the Old Town Bridge. Or she's going to be there soon. And like, um, I think that they are going to go. He's from Bravos, right? Yes. Okay, hang on. So Arya got on that ship where she was like, Valar Morghulis, right? Yeah. That that led her to like, she's already connected back with Jaken when this starts. Maybe she's, like, on the ship. But she's, like, on her way to Jaken. Okay. And that's... They're gonna meet up in Old Town. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um... Yeah. Sorry, you were saying something Um. It. Oh, yeah, okay. So, she's gonna go to Bravos. They're, go- they're gonna go to Bravos. Um... Mm-hmm. Cause he has to go back and, like... I don't know. It's his town, you know? He's going back. He's going back yes. home. Um... You know what I really want? I want... What? Okay. So, I, you know how... I don't know what you want. Where was Serio from? Bravos. Okay. So maybe she meets, First like, sort of more Bravos. water dancers, and she does more, like, water dancing and, like, learns, and, like, she gets to, like, continue honing her craft um, and be, like, be doing that. And that's, like, happy thoughts. Then bad thoughts is... She could be Jaken's sidekick and then be like 
more of like evil murdering crazy child um and just killing people so that's probably not good so honing her craft but for bad yeah basically <laughs> not so good okay yeah that's my aria predictions and now my sansa little fingers predictions are basically connected yeah for sure okay so little finger gets out of it by lying however out of it like it, lies his yes, death yes yes out of the yeah, li- yeah. lies his death <laughs> issue right okay <laughs> Uh, we blame Merlion, homie dead, gone, out the moon door, cool. you know? Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so now that Lice is not here, the issue is that now Littlefinger can be even, like, worse. Grosser. Grosser yeah. and worse to Sansa. However, Sansa knows things that she didn't know before mm-hmm. that she can use against him. However... <laughs> he could also ruin her life. So I think we're at this standstill where they can both ruin each other's lives. And they both so know they that the must other cut. Both continue as is. Exactly. And they and they both can't like I feel like that I feel like that means that Sansa can kind of like stand up for herself a little bit and it can be one of those yeah. like she can stand up to him and like set some boundaries. Do you know what I okay. mean? Just because of yes. that equality now. Um, yeah. Which, thank God. Um, and then... I think all he can do... Because the thing is, I think eventually Cersei's gonna be like, come back, you know? Shit's falling apart. Mm-hmm. We need you here dealing the coin, you know? And I think yeah. that until she calls him back, he'll be trying to deal with, like, basically all the PR from this event. Right. And like they already hated him, so I think he'll be trying to mend those relationships. Hopefully, if he's smart and has a brain and wants to maintain his power at all in this place, he'll be. Yeah, doing it does all not that. sound like him. <laughs> so he'll be doing that, and then when Cersei calls him back, so until then, Sansa will still be there. But I think the only option he can do, like, it's not like he can take Sansa back to King's Landing with him, but he also can't yeah. leave her here because she could start blabbing. So I think the only option he has is taking her to the fingers. Oh, and just tell? leaving her at his, like, yeah. you know, sad little house yeah, so until whenever, he comes back. So whenever he has to be at King's Landing, I think that'll be his plan, is to leave her at the fingers. But okay. hopefully she can escape somehow. And, okay. Um, yeah, she can escape, basically, is the plan. Cool. Yeah. So, Next. those are my thoughts. Tyrion. So, he has denounced his family. He's killed a fa- he's kinslayer now. Mm-hmm. Who's he got? Braun, but Braun's still there. Can't do much with that connection. Mountain people, what are you gonna do? Go hang out with them? John, can't do anything. So he's got nobody, unfortunately. So he's mm-hmm. either in his revenge era or he's gonna move on. I think that he's in his revenge era. So he's technically the heir. Yeah. And I think that he's going to try and claim being the heir of Casterly Rock. Okay. During that, like, transition period of what's going on. But how are they gonna... Wait, wait. Yeah. Wait. So, um, he does that, and then he maybe joins the Martell's revenge plan. And then they... Okay, so he's doing this covertly, not like... He's in King's Landing, like, I am the new Tyrell now. You have to deal with me. I don't think so. Yeah, because then they would be like, you killed him. We can just kill you yeah. in return. Like, I think you know? this is a, he's going to use the Martells as safety. And the Martells. So he goes to Dorne then? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So there's that. and So it's basically like the Martells get the air and then he gets mm-hmm. the safety. Yeah. Of his crimes and everything. And then Jamie uber guilt um he's gonna be like what on earth um and he's he's gonna know i mean everyone's gonna know yeah um Mm -hmm. i think cersei will be like quit your job we need you to do other stuff and he's gonna be like i can't um and then their relationship's gonna be over because of that because he says i can't quit my job basically and like everything else that's been happening um (laughs) And then him and Brienne are going to be endgame joking. 
Um, well, Brienne's off. I know. I'm joking. On the room I'm now. joking. No, no, no. I mean, they can be endgame in four yeah. books from now, but like. <laughs> yeah. I think what he's going to do is enhance security because there's been a lot of deaths recently. And he's got to he's got to make sure no more people die. Yeah, he's going to tighten up the ship. Yeah, you know? set some new rules, do some stuff, and then um, I think that's kind of it. Just a lot of yeah. sadness. Okay, next. Brienne, this is interesting. I like this one. So, you know how her whole thing is like, oh my god, I delivered you, now where's Sansa and Arya, you know? So I mm-hmm. think she's going to follow all the little trails and crumbs and pieces, and she's going to be a really good detective. And um, she's going to end up, she's going to be trying to find Sansa and like Arya and all that, but she's going to end up following the Catelyn trail because she's going to hear about like all the rumors of the phrase and all of the Red Wedding stuff that's happening. Right. So then maybe she finds an escaping Sansa Mm -hmm. and then they go do the Catelyn confrontation and then zombie uh, Catelyn gets put down. Okay. Don't you like that? I do like that. Anyway, I should be a writer. Joking. Yeah, uh, no, that it... I Yeah, no. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Okay. Cersei. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have written screaming, crying, throwing up. Um, and I mm-hmm. think that'll be her for a lot of this. I think she's gonna like mm-hmm. try to be the. I think she's gonna try to be queen regent, but like also everyone's gonna be turning on her because they already don't respect her authority. And on top of that, everybody is like dying. Um, and the yeah, but she now has the chance good. to prove them all wrong. She does, uh, but also like grief, um, over every family member of hers dying might make it hard for her to prove them wrong. Um, also, uh, I think. You know the whole, in the second book, when, like, King's Landing, like, the city and everything was, like, mad at them and stuff? And, like, there was all those yeah. protests and yeah, stuff? Yeah, riot. I feel like we'll have that coming back, too. Another riot. Yeah. And then I think we'll also, um, uh, yeah, I think just that. I think more of my Cersei things kind of- So- come, Like- Oh, yeah, my go ahead, Cersei sorry. My things come more into play when we talk about the other families. Because I think her stuff, I don't know what she's going to do. I don't have any predictions for her actions. I just have predictions for her reactions. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> you know what? That is, that is, yeah, I like that. Okay, okay go. Um. Okay, next is Jorah. Um, Jorah, uh, okay, I have two predictions for him. I don't know which one he's going to do. A- he can keep being devoted to Danny and stuff and be like, take me back. Like, maybe he tries to, like, help her in, like, sly ways, but that ends up ruining things for her. And then she further is like, get the fuck out of my life. And it's this annoying thing. Or he mm-hmm. does the exact opposite, mm-hmm. where he never really cared about her. And he goes to um, Kate. Because I found something. And the reason I make this prediction, I forgot to mention, is because I found something in the appendix, when I was looking at the high tower stuff, okay, hold yeah. up, the high tower stuff, okay, you know, like the high tower family, like the people in charge, so mm-hmm. they have so many different, okay, so the dude who's in charge, his daughter is the one who married Jara. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. So anyway, basically because of that. Um, I'm thinking, you know, he leaves his current love, by which I mean obsession, to go back yeah. to his, like, old love and be like, oh my god, take me back. So he goes back to Old Town and he's like, yeah. hey guys, here's no, all the No, hang on. His ex-wife is not in Old Town. Where is she? They, so after... He tried to sell people into slavery. Ned Stark was after him. They, him and his wife took off to one of the free cities where he worked as a sellsword. And then she got in a relationship with some rich guy and became a courtesan. Uh, I forgot about that. Okay. 
adjustment. Um, okay, <laughs> but I still, I feel like now that we've introduced Old Town, I'm like trying to do stuff with it. So maybe mm-hmm. he shows up at Old Town. He's like, here's the deal. All the rumors you've been hearing are true. Here's all the info that I can help you use against Yeah, you. so Old Town's like the Danny hub all of a sudden. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's basically my prediction for him is either he okay. fucks things up by trying to help her or fucks things up by trying to fuck her over. Okay. Yeah. So it's makes sense. Uh, oh, okay. Basically, he last thing, he could meet Arya and or Jaquen on the way since they're traveling in opposite right. directions. Cool. Next. Daenerys. Um... Basic stuff. She stays, learns from Barristan, tries to break all like the, like, slavery institutions basically, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> tries to conquer the world in that way. Um, and then I, uh, does she succeed in that? Yeah. Or okay. she succeeds enough to where, like, at the end of the fourth book, she's gonna be like comfortable being like, okay. So I feel like throughout the fourth book, she's going to be here and doing all these things. And this is her current mission, right? Before she Mm -hmm. goes and tries to like get her crown back and stuff. I think as she's here, everyone around her is going to be like, okay, but we have all these people now. We should go. We have all these people now. We should go. Right. Because they'll be getting that pressure from the West of everyone finding out about her, all the things spreading. Maybe we get another assassination attempt or something. So there's going to be all this pressure for her to leave, but she's going to be like, no, I have to do this. So maybe by the end of the book, it'll finally be at the, like the bubbling point where she's like, okay, now let's go. And she feels like she's done a good enough job that there's some sort of structure that won't fall apart super soon. Maybe she like, you know, her assistant, she trains her up to like run everything. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there's like, she has stuff in place for things to not fall mm-hmm. apart. And then at the end of the book, she's going to, like, head back. Set sail. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically it. And I also think visitors okay. are going to come and be like, can I see your dragons? Right. As they have. Cool. Okay. And now all the families. Yeah. Okay. This is when I started chunking people together because I was like, there's no way I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so these are all pretty related because they all bounce off of each other. Okay. So yeah. I think the Tyrells. As they've already been trying, they're going to try and lock in that Tom and marriage. Um, mm-hmm. But they also now have this option where they could, like, if the Lannister thing doesn't seem to be working out, mm-hmm. like, if the Lannisters start getting overtaken by, like, the Martells or something. Yeah, but who are they going to marry to? I don't know. Marcella. <laughs> but maybe... <laughs> <laughs> maybe they could do like i mean i would love a couple of queer queens but i don't think it's happening <laughs> i'm dead like <laughs> to, to marjorie yeah i don't know like maybe they, marry... they have like the same name basically marjorie yeah. marcella <laughs> true maybe they could do like um instead of marjorie it's the person marjorie is supposed to be married no dornish no, person no, no, no. you know marjorie's siblings the dudes what were their names Oh, Willis. Maybe, yeah. Tyrell, maybe, the older one, and yeah. Loris, but he's now sworn to the Kingsguard. But that but... one in between, that random guy who we don't hear about, but we know she has a third brother, maybe one of those brothers can be married to, like... I think the third brother is married. Really? Okay, sad. Okay, then maybe just Willis. <laughs> so maybe Willis... I don't know if this is, like, kay. too far... Y- okay, hang on. You're not accounting for their, like, generations-long rivalry with the martels like no they, they don't, don't have like to, the they don't Dornish. have to get married to the martels i'm suggesting something else oh okay okay maybe they partner together with like stannis or something ah. and then like shireen and like willis get married or something like maybe there's some sort of maybe they change it up okay um <laughs> and they start supporting stannis because remember stannis is going on a smear campaign um right they did betrays not betray but fight against Stannis at the Blackwater but I guess you gotta flow with the times yeah, you gotta just go <laughs> with it you know um okay that um and then the Martells okay so they're gonna try and lock down the Marcella they're gonna lock down Tyrion um and I think one of the um uh, I think one of the difficulties 
that could happen um with the with the Tyrells supporting the Lannisters, one of the issues that could come up is that, like, because obviously Jamie knows that, like, he was the one who told Tyrion all the stuff that led to further things happening and, like, all that. So maybe Jamie's out here, like, on Tyrion's side still, but then the Tyrells and Cersei are like, dude, you can't still be on your brother's side. So maybe mm-hmm. that's, like, another conflict point, because... Maybe they're like, let's just kill Tyrion, yeah, and then they don't have um, an heir. Once again, Tyrion and Jaime had a bad parting. Did they? Don't you remember? I just remember. Jaime tells him, I lied to you about your wife. And Tyrion says, well, fuck you and fuck your kid that I killed. But I think I was hoping that Jaime didn't believe that. Okay, but, like, he also says stuff about, like, Cersei having sex with people and just, like, all these horrible things. Like, he really just I know, but I goes s- for it. I just, maybe I'm giving Jamie too much credit, but okay. I feel like Jamie wouldn't be like, yeah, let's, like, kill my brother. Yeah, that was also before he killed their father, too. Just, just like, pointing out all the I things. I know, but I, I still just don't, like... Like, just because Tyrion killed their father, I like, even though he's not going to be happy with Tyrion, I don't think that means that he's like, yeah, let's kill him. Okay. Do you know what I mean? All right. Yeah. Um, no, that makes sense. Okay. So that, okay. So that's Tyrells and Martellus. They're both trying to do their own thing to get the crown, basically. Mm-hmm. Greyjoy, Theon's dad is dead. There's a battle for who's the heir. Because the dude who kills mm-hmm. Theon's dad is gone. Um, well, okay, when you keep saying this as if it's a thing, we don't know for a fact that a dude killed Theon's dad, but we know that the ghost of High Heart had this dream about a bridge and okay, a drowned man with a crow. But in my predictions, we have to go, like, I'm predicting Yeah, but you're saying we think. know the guy that killed him is gone. Okay, like, I just, let me speak. You said to make it succinct, and I'm trying. <laughs> okay okay so i'm i also said i'm gonna question things that don't make sense <laughs> okay, fine fine i okay i understand where you're coming from um i feel like they need allies because the gray are kind of on their own rock right now so regardless of who becomes the heir also like, like do, in the north in places yeah yeah true so Maybe, like, maybe they partner with the Freys. Okay, but the Freys are, like, with the Boltons now. Like, they're they're real close friends, you know? Like, they, they're they intermarried. They planned a red wedding together. Like Yeah, but the Freys are also going to be crisising because of the Catelyn stuff. Oh, uh, okay. So they're a little desperate right now. Okay. You know? So maybe they think sure. by, like, making these alliances and stuff, like, there's, you know, maybe they, maybe they get desperate. I don't know. Um, okay. Freys are basically quaking and trying to get allies. Um, so Greyjoys are also trying to get allies? That That's it? Fighting for the throne and then trying to ally? Yeah, that's all I can think of. But then who, who what's your prediction who for who's wins? on the throne? Yeah. I... I actually, I literally didn't think of that. Um, that's a good, okay, wait, let me think. I think it'll be the, I think it'll be the Lannisters for a bit. And then maybe, I think it'll be Lannisters. And then I think it'll be looking like the Martells and Tyrion are about to win. But then the Lannisters finally pull it together. No, hang on. No, no, not the Iron Throne. The 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 sea the sea salt throne. The sea salt. Like oh! the Greyjoy oh! title. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> Okay, so we Who's have Who's like the head of House Greyjoy? Is it too hopeful to say like Asha or something? I'm I'm asking you. You tell me. I don't know, maybe, but I feel like Maybe just some, like, random dude. Because we don't know that many people who were in the running, right? Like, it was basically, like, Asha and then his one other sibling who was, like, greedy. 
Like, yeah. Balon's one other sibling. And then, obviously, a bunch of the other dudes are going to try, but I don't remember any of them significantly enough to like, okay. face them. Okay, so you're saying Asha? Yeah, because that's the only name I can think of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, do you want... If if you're wanting for names, I can give you names. Yeah, but they don't mean anything to me, I don't think, right? Uh, Are they important enough people? We've met one of the brothers, which is... Which was that... um. Like, when Theon goes back to Pike, he meets his uncle, Aaron. But wasn't he, like, really religious? Yeah, he's the priest. So I don't think he's going to be vying for power, right? Right. But then, of course, the theory with the bridge that we had previously concluded is that it's Balon's brother, Euron, Crow's Eye, Uh who suddenly, randomly showed up to Pike the day after his brother died. So I guess it could be, like, um... Jaken did the killing for the dude to now have the power. So it yeah. could be the brother. I That's mean, probably a better prediction. A Maybe it's the brother. Assassins. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's the brother. It's the brother. Yeah, it's it's because like they don't necessarily find and like follow the rules of the Greenlands. In that way, it would be like so Balon's sons, of which like. You know, it would have been Theon, but then from that it goes to Balon's siblings. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And but if the like, dude's powerful the... enough to hire an assassin, he's probably powerful enough to win the battle of who. Does okay. It. So Euron's going to be like head of the Great I Joys. think so, yeah. Cool. And then. Uh, how's Asha going to feel about that? Probably not great. But maybe she okay. has, like, a good position in his thing. I don't know. All right. I don't yeah. know. We'll find out. And then the only other thing I have is Tully's. So are they still under siege at River Run? Yes. By who again? The phrase. No, well, no, hang on. I don't know if it's the phrase or the Lannisters, but, like, it's their combined forces or something. Okay. Because <laughs> also, if the phrase get desperate enough... Maybe they let that go in hopes that the Catelyn stuff will stop. Like, maybe they think... Oh, they'll let River Run be? Maybe if it gets bad enough. Yeah, but <coughs> I think River Run, like, Tywin gave River Run to one of the Freys. Oh, did he? Yeah. Gross. Okay. Well, I guess they're managing River Run. Um, I don't know what Brendan's like, gonna do. He's like Re- on a rock. Okay. So he, Brendan Tully is in River Run fighting off the siege. Like that's what you mean yeah, by yeah, he's yeah. on a rock. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like what's he gonna do? I think I think the only thing he can do, the only prediction I really had for him, is maybe he tries to get Littlefinger's support because now Littlefinger is technically in Lysa's position, and he knows Lysa's mm-hmm. dead. And he has, obviously he was there his whole life at the Eerie, so he has connections and stuff. So maybe he'll just try to get, like, Littlefinger's attention and be like, hey, help us. Like, you're in charge now. Okay. That's all I can think of. But Littlefinger's aligned with the Lannisters, who he's fighting against. Oh, small detail. Um, (laughs) he could still try. They're under siege. Oh, yeah. Also, Littlefinger is the Lord of Harrenhal, who they have made the Lord of the Trident, a.k.a. the Riverlands. So literally... (laughs) Just owns everything now. Yeah. Yeah. I I literally don't know. Yeah, that's all I can think of. Those are all my... I'm predicted out. Okay. Loved that and i am i'm actually okay i'm gonna give myself credit but also you credit i'm gonna give myself credit for getting you to write out those predictions ahead of time because then it gives you time to like actually ruminate and like come up with things and you have yeah like, a bunch, so otherwise i wouldn't have had good predictions on and the also spot. yes i was gonna say <laughs> kudos to you for coming up with good predictions thank you i tried <laughs> um yeah i did try so let's then talk about next chapters do we have any emails no we don't what no emails you guys do you hate us yeah i think they might like us because we're at like (laughs) two and a half hours and nobody wants to be reading emails right now 
No, but do send us emails. But send us emails anticipating shorter chapter. I don't know. That's not No, just, just send um, us emails. Just send it's us emails. It's our responsibility to deal with our time management and you shouldn't have to worry about us. So please send us emails. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I love, like, just, oh, I, love, uh, I love everyone's emails because it feels like I'm not just, like, yelling into the void. And y'all are so yeah. cool and so slay, and I appreciate every single one of you. Anyway, it's like but I also, 4 a.m., so well, I'm really mushy yeah, right now. Hang on. Stop. <laughs> I I really also, I want to be the one to shout out our Discord this time, by the Ooh. way. I know we are not there yet, <laughs> but I've been roughing it through this week, and shit have, has been like, <sighs> there's so much going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> And I was like really struggling with something. And I just kind of like word vomited, word vomited. Oh God, why did I say those <laughs> words back to back <laughs> onto Discord? Because I was like, ah, and people were so nice. And I, I just really appreciate everyone. And just thank you. Yeah, y'all are so slay. Yeah. Okay. Back to next <laughs> chapters. We're reading two next time. So for you, <gasps> the last time today, use your predicting powers oh, and give God. me two. Okay, Chapter I'm names. all predicted out. Okay. I know. Then just tell me who you want or like who you think it'll be. Like someone new, someone old, someone. Okay. I would love I to know. see Arya. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. No, I want someone new for the first one. What am I talking about? Okay. I would love to see. What's his face? Ale- Who did we get this time? Alaris. Yes. Alaris. I want to see Alaris. Okay. And I want to see Arya, both A's. Alaris and Arya. Cool. You really want to be like, because you predicted Arya is going to Old Town, so you really just want to stay in Old Town? I want to know what's going for on. For the entire three chapters of the book? First three chapters? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Okay, well, you're wrong is all that's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, thanks. Okay, so what am I seeing? My heart skipped a beat. I need to take a drink of water. Why did your heart skip a beat? Okay, chapter one, who is it? Chapter one of A Feast for Crows is The Prophet. What? Who is the prophet? You tell me. I don't know. Um. What? I don't know who the prophet is. I've never met the prophet. Maybe we're in Bravos already or something. And we meet a prophet. Okay. Or is it just like. Or is it like Ghost of High Heart or some sh- Like, who's the prophet? I mean, she is the most prophiest of prophets. <laughs> okay, maybe... You know what? Throwing it out there. Maybe this is the three-eyed crow, and it's called the prophet. <gasps> that would be so cool. Okay. All right. I swear to God, Chapter- if this is some random, like, if this is some sort of letdown, like, they call it the prophet, and it's, like, some sort of, like... Oh, this is a fairy tale. Like, come on. Huh? Like, if it ends up being, like, a story or something. Like, I want someone to be called okay. the prophet. Like, that would be cool. Okay. Well, maybe the second one will help. Chapter two of A Feast of Four Crows is The Captain of Guards. What? Noticing any kind of a theme here. Like, ships and, like. No, the captain of guards. Okay. Where's ships and guards? I don't know. Captain of guards? Like, guardians? Of, like, spirit world? Like, I don't know. What's ha- I don't know. Why are don't you know. going to the spirit world? Stay in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's it? what's it again? I literally forget. What did you say? The captain of guards. The captain of guards? Like... Like King's Guard, um. Yeah, like that kind of guard. Yeah. Okay, thanks. The Captain of Guards. Is this like a different castle at the wall or something? 
At the wall? Why at the wall? I don't know. Captain of Guards! <laughs> Why are you so confused? I don't know. I just, I don't understand what any of this means. I'm really confused. <laughs> the Captain of Guards? Where have we seen guards? I don't know. Like all okay, I okay, just of, give me a prediction for a place in the world. All I know we'll is like on. the city guard commander, or like okay, so like city guard, like King's Landing, I know, Old but Town. You would have heard of this, Lannisport. Captain of guards. I don't. I'm literally so confused. I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna go with my Old Town prediction. This is like. Something off the coast of Old Town. Old Town doesn't. Off the I don't coast know. Of I don't know. Town? I don't know. I'm confused. For a second, you were gonna say it's Leo's dad who's the cap, who's like the captain of the City Watch, but oh, <laughs> then you said off the coast. I don't know. I have no idea what this is. I have no prediction. I'm so tired. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. I think I think I well I think I'm really tired. Like genuinely, my brain is brain is blank. Blank. <laughs> genuinely, my brain is blank. Like I have no idea. Okay, wait. Let me. Okay, let me try. Okay, okay. I don't think it's Danny. Because Danny doesn't have guards. How would there be a captain of guards? I don't think it's mm-hmm. at the wall. I don't think it's Winterfell. I don't think it's the phrase. I don't think it's the Greyjoy area. It could be the Greyjoy area. Captain of Guards. Maybe like the dude who's in charge now is like also known as like the Captain of Guards. Like maybe that was his job back in the day. I don't know. Um, sure. Okay. So Iron Islands. Or it could be someone in like Dorne. You know, the Sea of okay. Dorne. So Dorne. Okay, Dorne. Let's call it Dorne. <laughs> I don't know why you were like stuck on the sea and ship thing there's captains of things other than ships i'm i think i'm just tired so my brain's going to that one area so i'm like really <laughs> okay. like i can acknowledge that i'm stuck but i can't unstick <laughs> unstick yeah. i'm like i'm like a little spider-man right now um yeah yeah so I, we're stuck on the sea we're stuck on the sea man <laughs> that's all i can say all right I'm so well, confused. Can you give me a hint? Because I'm going to find out anyway. At least for the prophet. Because I'm going to find out as soon as I start. So it's not even a spoiler. Just give me a hint. Like, what area of the world is this? I'll find out, right? Okay, my brain's also tired, so I'm trying to think of, like, what I could say and what I should say and what I want to say and what I don't want to say, you know? (laughs) Well, I'll tell you this. So, like, I won't tell you where or what or who, (laughs) but, like, these people, like... These are their titles. Uh Uh-huh. Like, this is their job or whatever, you know? Like, this is their... Yeah, so they're going to have names. So this is our first instance of chapters having titles as opposed to just characters. Ooh. Interesting. See what also what I mean about, like, switching it up for the fourth book? Yeah, Yeah, this is a real vibe shift. Yeah. We're like completely. I will tell you these are new people to you. So that. <gasps> Wait, so it's people I have, haven't met? New POVs. Oh. Well, obviously they're new POVs. I would know if Arya's nickname was the Prophet. <laughs> I mean, Jamie could be the Captain of Guards. Okay. All I can think of for Captain of Guards is oh god i can't even i'm so tired i can't even tell you what that movie is called but all the songs are playing in my head but there's a song that's called rest and recreation where they're like i don't know okay that's fine i just someone out there will know and they'll understand but it's like he sings like now i'm gonna be captain of the guard and 
this promotion. Basically, he gets a promotion and he's singing about it. And he literally just says, like, I'm going to be captain of the guard and it's cool. That's all I can think of. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't think too much. I think we need to <laughs> shut this the thinking box. The thinking box. You know down. what? God. We should give ourselves a pat on the back. 4.09 a.m. Yeah, we need to give ourselves a pat on the back because we did pretty well for starting at 1 a.m. recording. Um, We kind of slayed that. Go off us. We really, o- <laughs> we really only truly fell apart in like the last half hour when my brain shut down. And I didn't... Basically, as soon as I finished my like verbiage like predictions i shut down brain went okay Woo, sleep 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 all right let's let's seriously wrap it up okay <laughs> people send us those emails we do like them and we will read them and we love them and we need them and we're desperate i don't okay. know okay i don't know what join I'm us on discord but join the discord because it's amazing it's so fun. i love everyone everyone's so cool and, and we slay on there and we have like 50 different channels courtesy of me yeah and it's good yeah and follow us on instagram at pop culture symposium there you go yeah i'm so tired <laughs> Un- no yeah i get it until next time farewell my friends talk to you later